uphold those New Year's resolutions. So if one of your goals is prioritizing your health, we got just the thing for you. Our community is gearing up for another successful year. We've got health and fitness experts to help guide us all through it. So if you want to join in on the fun, just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with over a half million folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, we're going to share easy ways to help you look and feel your best, from simple self-care tips to superfoods that are great for boosting nutrition. Then later, we're going to kick off the new year with some fun workouts. This is Start Today. First up, let's see what our fitness leader, Stephanie Mansoor, had in store for this month's workout challenge. Steph, good to see you. Good to see you, Happy you too. New Happy New Year. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, nice to see you. We got all of our, our friendly pages and interns here. Let's just keep our costs good. down. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, you and the team over at Start Today uh, have a, a kind of a quick start guide. What, yeah. So what are the, the tips you've compiled, some of them, to get our year off on the right foot? You know, we're going to ease into the new year. Uh -huh. We are going to start off by committing to five minutes a day of exercise. Okay. We're going to start by eating a little healthier, adding in one vegetable a day, drinking a glass of water before you even get out of bed. Oh, and I'm going to show you some other messy. ways. It, yeah, well, just sit up. Sit oh, up before okay. you drink the water. Very yeah, doable, yeah. Though. This is a doable. Very doable. Yeah. And I'm going to be coming at you live over on Facebook. When you go into our Start oh. Today Facebook group every day today, right after the show, oh, 10 a.m. Wow. Eastern time every day this week to wow. give you even more tips. So okay. to be productive at, in, in the morning, you say you need to start the night before. Yes. So you want to plan ahead. I want uh -huh. you to train your brain that when you go to sleep, you're seeing your clothes that are laid out for tomorrow, uh, for your, your workout, workout clothes. So when you wake up, you drink your glass of water, right. you get out of bed, you put on your workout clothes, and right away we start off with some stretching. So we bring one knee in towards the chest, mm -hmm. lower it down, then the other knee in. If you're someone that wakes up with stiff, achy joints, or if you have a tight low back, this is a great exercise to do right when you get out of bed, before you even go into the restroom to loosen and up your body. For balance. This is great for balance too, Al. Yes, exactly. So moving on into the bathroom here. Welcome. Hi. Well, hello. And Michelle and George are in my bathroom as well. Yes, they that, are. That weird at all. That weird at all. <laughs> They're going to start by brushing their teeth. So anytime you're in the bathroom, you know, first thing in the morning, I want you to open the feet wide while you're brushing your teeth, bend one knee, stretch that inner thigh, and then go to the other side and stretch the other ones. This is a really big bang. She's like, Mom, I morning. made it. <laughs> <laughs> big bang for your morning routine. Anything. But <laughs> good. No, so bending the knees, loosening up the hips while you're brushing, your, brushing your, teeth. your teeth. We now, can no so longer stand still brushing our teeth, everybody. <laughs> so Steph, seriously. Your teeth, so while you're you're brushing this? Yes. Okay. Yes, while you're brushing your that teeth. Like now, while dangerous. you're shaving or doing your hair, yeah. you're going to okay. do some calf I'm raises out. here. <laughs> <laughs> so lifting up onto the tiptoes, lowering down. Squeeze those yeah. glutes at the top. Yeah, nice, I'm nice, like right up sorry. as high as you can. Okay. Yes, while you're brushing your hair, while you're getting ready in the bathroom. And again, we're trying to implement these little things in your day. Again, this isn't a huge workout, but, but it gets something you moving. Yeah. Jump started. We yes. can do that. We can all commit about, to that. Yes. Right, we okay. brushed our teeth. We brushed our hair. Yep. Now we're going to make our eggs. That's right. So we're whisking our eggs, and as we're whisking here, we're going to do some shoulder rolls. So rolling those shoulders up, back, and down. Good. You can even drop one ear to one side here. Feel that stretch right oh, there, yeah. Greg? Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yes. And then if you're someone that's microwaving or putting something in the blender, we're going to do 10 squats. Okay. So you turn that thing on, and we go look down into that squat. Good. Press down through the heels you know to stand in Dylan's up. Dylan's defense, when she boils water, she does this. Yes. So it's like just great. around just throughout the day. Exactly. So it's basically yeah. constant yeah. movement. Yeah. Constant yeah. movement. Constant movement. Constant movement. And then next week, once you do this for a few days, next week you're ready to go with our January challenge. This is great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And thank you guys, by the way. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Up next, today contributor Allie Love back with her series, Love Your Mornings. This time, she's sharing some creative self-care hacks. And we're going to take it back to the basics with tips to nourish and fuel our bodies. We'll be right back.
And welcome back. Health and wellness is a key to start your start today. And sometimes that means doing small acts of self-care that can make a big impact in your life. Today, contributor Allie Love is here to do just that with some of her favorite natural beauty hacks. Coconut oil, especially in the hard form, is one of the greatest yes. inventions. I put it on my kids, I put it on my skin, mm -hmm. I use it for everything. What do you think it's good for? All the rage, yeah. treatment buns. So I actually have it in my hair right now. I have a bun going yes. on. So I've lathered coconut oil, put it in my hair, pull my hair back. It's good for two things. One, yeah. hydrating the hair, which is most importantly, yeah. making sure it's, it's shiny, it's healthy. You can see my girl right here on TikTok putting it in, brushing it through, putting it in a bun. And the second thing that it's really good for is you're able to do two things at once. I'm at work right now with you, Hoda. Yeah. And I'm getting a treatment in my hair at the same time. So what happens when you wash out the coconut oil? How hair is shiny, feel? healthy, yeah, yeah, softer. Yeah. Like, it's really important and it's great for blow dry. Yeah. So you just take a bunch and I literally just put it put right it, in. Put it. Look at you. Look at just you. Put, put it in there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Laying it down. And it's also shiny. You see my shine, honey? You see, see my shine. shine? By the way, I love just pure coconut oil on, on the, the skin. skin. All right. So this is interesting. People are looking for ways to regrow hair. Yes. Now, this is something that's on TikTok, on social media. And I will say, disclaimer on this one, try it. If it works for you, yeah. it works for you. A lot of celebrities, they really live by it, especially like Lala Anthony. This is rice water. So basically, you take rice, you put some water in it, you let it soak for 30 minutes, you put it in a spray bottle here. Wait, this is the stuff that usually you rinse out when you're washing your rice to yes. get rid of all that stuff. This stuff right here, you put it in your hair. It's supposed to promote hair growth. You can put a half a cup of rice, I'd say something around three to two to three cups of water. You let it soak for 30 minutes. You can rinse the rice if you're a little bit concerned, but I'll show you. This is all you do. Let Dump it soak. It in. It's like, I know. Strain some... it, put it in a bottle, and put it on your hair. That's so Two funny. to three times a week. Because when you have basmati rice, they tell you to wash it three or four times and yes. dump out that cloudy water. So you don't get you it. You use the cloudy water. Yes, we're using all things in our kitchen. All right, let's make luscious eyelashes. Yes. I oh. love lashes. I feel like a lash and a brow makes the face. You yeah. don't need anything but some good brows and nice lashes. Right. But if you're anything like us, maybe yeah. we don't always want mascara. No, but we, we don't. We want to look like we do. Okay, so, so what this do you do? one is a new hack that I love. You take a lash curler, you curl your lashes, and you take a little brush. It could be Aquaphor, which <gasps> is the product I swear by. I love Aquaphor. Or petroleum jelly Vaseline. You curl the lash and then you brush it up. You and put it, Aquaphor on your lashes? On the lash. A little bit at a time. And you can see our amazing producer who's going to come up here, Eden. This is a before and after. Wow. Lift on the lash. That's just it, Aquaphor. And it doesn't get in your eye, it's no, fine. It's all it, good. It's yeah, just and you're brushing. a thin, thin layer. Exactly. Um, continuing with the face, yeah. clay mask. Okay. So I have sensitive, delicate skin. Yeah. I don't always want to put, again, so many chemicals on my skin. No. A clay mask is really good absorbing that extra mo excess moisture out of your face, all of the oil without so, so many a, chemicals. This is a powder? So this is a powder mask. Yeah. This is a clay mask. You add water in, you mix it up, you have Wait a fun. Minute. This is, I do this at Is home. that what this is for? This yes. is for, okay. That's exactly what it's okay. for. Okay, okay. And you just mix it up and then you put it on your face. And I love to see this one working because it shows you your pores. And yeah, it you can oil. feel it. Yes. Oh, I know. It's kind of it. like toothpaste. The menthol, I don't know if it's working, but it's working, yeah. honey. It's you put working. it on, it dries out. Yes. All right, let's get to a J-Lo favorite. J-Lo favorite. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to look like J-Lo? Basically, this is just what olive is oil. This is olive oil, and for you, maybe you think of a salad. I think of JLo's body. Yes. It's perfect, right? <laughs> yes. What she does is she lathers on olive oil when she walks the red carpet. Hydration. She does? Yes, hydration of the skin gives you that shine, that glow. It really I does. usually takes it, take it, I'll put a little lotion. I love a scented because I don't want to smell like a garden salad. Yeah. And I'll put it on. Two things about this, I will yep. say. If you are wearing this out on a night out, be sure to have someone else apply it for you because yeah. getting oil on your clothes is the worst. And secondly, if you're someone in a hot climate, be careful not to wear this out in the sun. Yeah, so you want a night out, you know what I mean? Looking right. fresh, fly and Now, how about a lip scrub? Oh, this is my favorite. Okay, so. You know why? I feel like I think of your girls for this mm. one. All you need to do, you can take that coconut oil yeah. in your kitchen, olive oil or coconut oil or any oil that's hard. With what? Put some sugar. That's in it. here, sugar, tea, what is it, a teaspoon of sugar? Yeah. Makes mix the, the medicine, medicine go, go down. down. Yeah. Well, it makes mix your lips hydrated. Yeah, you mix it up, yeah. and then you have this kind of like hard scrub. And you just put it on your lip, put on your rub lips. it on. Uh-huh. Okay, and what's this? What's yeah. this bottle right here? Oh, those are essential oils. Okay. So you, you can make it smell inside. good. Make it smell good. Yeah, and again, all of these things are beneficial for anyone who's looking to kind of revamp their makeup wardrobe, take care mm. of their skin, eliminate chemicals out of your kitchen, Good. out of your house, out of your Excellent. product. Love it. Love it, Allie. Love you. Just ahead, we're going to have two Start Today workouts to help us all get a jump start on our fitness goals. But first, let's fuel our bodies. We're going to reveal the best superfoods to add to your daily meals right after this.
We're back with more Start today. Now, if you're looking to get your health back on track, but not sure where to begin, we have got you covered. Wellness expert, Dr. Christian Gonzalez walked Hoda and Jenna through the simple things we can all do to nourish our bodies. I like your opening concept. It's like in medicine, people are always treating the illnesses, but there's a whole nutrition piece yeah. that's so important that sometimes gets overlooked. Big time. Yeah. And we can make these interventions so quickly, a lot of bang for the buck, easy stuff to get us in good health. Okay. Amazing. So starting the day, let's start first thing in the morning. Yeah, we know we, yeah. We yeah everybody water. knows we need to drink water, yeah. but first of all, how much and how can we kind of spruce it up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we wake up and we're dehydrated. Yeah. Right? We lose about a cup of water every single morning or through yeah. the night. Yeah. So in the morning is one of the best times we could drink water and get into the habit is in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So how much should you drink? So, so realistically, the easiest way to think about it is eight ounces of water every hour until 10 o'clock. About 80 ounces of water a day. We want to make sure we're hydrating. We can use electrolyte-rich uh, salts. This is a sea salt. It's going to be electrolyte-rich, meaning we're getting more hydration out of our water just by adding a little pinch and putting it Adding in a water. pinch of, of salt. real salt, but real it needs salt. to be what you, a special kind a of special. salt. This is sea salt. Sea, right? okay. sea salt. So when you say a pinch, are we tasting it in the water or just it dissolves? No, you won't you won't, it. You won't so it won't be it. super oceany, salty okay. water. You just a little dab. A dab, put, put it, it in, in there. shake it up. There you go. And you're right. and how can you do all your drinking of water in the morning? Like You can drink. A, listen, if you're parched, that means you're dehydrated. All right, let's talk about hormonal health. When it comes to hormones... We need to focus on two big pieces for our nutrition. Okay. Okay. Fats, right? And we have some beautiful nuts and seeds, some mm -hmm. chia seeds, uh, some pumpkin seeds, walnuts, mm -hmm. almonds, and we need protein. Okay. okay. Both are going to help our hormones and the production of hormones. So what should we have and how many portions do you think? Right. So it depends on the person. Yep. But having enough protein and eating enough protein is essential. Making sure you're having it with every meal, getting a good amount of fat, with mm -hmm. every single meal. And, Let's and talk about the, yeah, what's yeah. On, this, in, on this board right Move here. Move on over to the, this board. This is my favorite board here. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, okay. These are the most powerful foods for your hormones. All of the foods on this platter here are going to help reduce inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we got? Berries, some of the most powerful, potent blueberries. antioxidants yeah, okay. to reduce that inflammation. Mm -hmm. that blue. Look at that is this ginger? This is turmeric. Turmeric. This is one of the best spices for reducing inflammation mm -hmm. in the body, mm -hmm. healthy hormones. Talk this is my this. favorite. This yeah, is tell my favorite. us. This is a secret. These are broccoli sprouts. They have a hundred times more nutrition, and and uh, then broccoli. Then broccoli, essential nutrients for reducing and helping our. So, hormones. if people are looking for these in the grocery store, these are the microgreens. Is that what they're called? Right, they're microgreens. And the broccoli is the best. It's it's potent. Can you taste? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to help with detoxification of estrogen in our body. Okay. We have too much estrogen. And it's potent. Yeah. It helps it balance and it. garlic. And garlic. And, garlic. Super and you can powerful. put the cook with these too. Uh -huh. Leave have to just eat the sprout okay. just like I did. Okay. okay. Green tea. This, this is, is a this crazy is a hack. hack. This is a crazy hack. And I thought about this to myself, and yeah. I go, okay. A lot of people drink alcohol, Yeah, can be an oxidative stressor in our body, right. inflammation again, right. cellular damage. Guess what reverses that or what? guess what protects us? Green tea, wow. one of the most important. So if you know you're going to go and have a drink, order a green tea first or afterwards? Before and after. Before, Before and after. after. This right. is going to protect the cells in your mouth and your body, reducing oxidation. Right. Let's move on to some other sort of bloating issues. <laughs> okay. How many of us are bloated? How many of us are struggling yes. with bloating, yes. complaining about it? Yes, always. I got, I got a little intervention. Before every meal, teaspoon of apple cider okay. vinegar oh and water gosh. creates oh. more acidity, helps with your digestion. Okay. But I thought you want to be alkaline, no? Not when you're eating. You, yeah. want, you want your stomach to be creating the most amount of acidity to break down that. Okay, okay. so what's okay. this guy? These are probiotics. Yeah, now, you probiotics. should take them. Yeah. The, the question is, should we be having probiotics? They could help with bloating, but I actually like fermented foods better. Mm. Tempeh, miso. Kefir, so kimchi. try to get it in your food. Exactly. But so if, you, if you don't eat if any not, of that, take, take one of these. Now, now, I've never heard of this. Taping oh. your mouth shut? <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> people have wanted us to do yes, it. They've been requesting it. Yeah. Listen, so. listen, there are some kooky things, but this actually really helps. So what do you do? Why do we bloat? A lot of us are mouth breathing, sucking in air through the night and through the day. So mouth taping has been actually one of the best interventions I have found for helping people when they're sleeping, taping their mouth, and reducing bloating in the morning. Okay, but I feel like I breathe through my mouth all day long. No, I'm scared. But during know. the mouth, during the day, it's okay because you're breathing out, right? Yeah, but we actually should be nasal breathing all throughout the day and night for our health. <laughs> we should mention before trying this, talk to your doctor. Okay, let's talk about nighttime routine. These are yeah. just some simple things yeah. we can do. Oh, 
like nighttime, better sleep starts yeah. as soon as the sun goes down, okay? So you want to make sure, one, you're moving your body throughout the day, yeah. increasing slow wave restful sleep. Mm -hmm. Himalayan salt lamps, it's going to be reducing the light, the, the strong light in the house, getting the Himalayan warm tones in the, in mm. the, in the house. Love it. Eye mask, beautiful for yeah. sleep. Mm -hmm. But here's one of my favorite things, creating mm. a ritual around your sleep. Yeah. Turn off your phone. Yes. Turn off the TV, the computer, about an hour before, turn it off. And then make sure you're creating a ritual like journaling, light stretching, taking mm. a nice bath, mm. not eating late, mm -hmm. cooling the house. So creating Do a ritual, uh, re reducing the nervous system, getting your body relaxed. Uh, these are all things we can do. I know. It's like, it's not a big deal. We could try this tomorrow and see if it works. Thank all of these you. things. Dr. G, thank you for coming to see us. Thank we really you. appreciate so it. Smart. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Coming up, we've got a workout to start the year off right. All you need is four minutes. Plus, we're going to show you some moves to help improve balance and stability. We'll be right back. We're back and time to get moving. First up, we're going to start with some easy exercises you can do in a matter of minutes. Here's fitness coach Akeem Emmons to show us how it's done. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so how do we get this started? What, what, what's the point of four? How do you do get a, to a whole workout in four minutes? Yeah. First and foremost, you've hired a professional. My okay. name is Coach Akeem Emmons, and I think that the big myth is that we need a lot to do a lot. So yeah. today we're just going to utilize our body weight. Okay. Okay. We're going to be working for time. Okay. We're going to get a full body workout within right. four minutes. My goal it. is for you guys to break a sweat. If you don't, the $20 bet that we made earlier is all ah, yours. Wait, what? Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right, the first one, Cactus and Seal Jack. Yes, Cactus and Seal Jack. All right. So we all done the jumping jack before. Uh -huh. So with the Cactus Jack and Seal Jack, cactuses will look like this. Uh -huh. Reach from the sky, elbows into the back pocket. Uh -huh. And then okay. the Seal Jacks, we're going wide like this. So we might need a little bit of real what estate. If right. What if you're low impact? And if you're low impact, well, you just step out to the side. All right. You know, and find a little music, okay? okay. okay. All right, all right find your groove. All right, guys, let's go for it. Okay. In three. Two, reach for the sky. One, let's go. Big reach. Yeah. Elbows into the back pocket. Uh -huh. Come on now. All right. Nice, okay. Chanel. Okay. okay. Boom. Right. Getting that heart rate up. Waking up that up. chest. Okay. Now we're going to go into our seal jacks. Arms straight out. Out to a T in three. Keep moving. Two, one. Let's do it. Arms straight out. Okay. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh. Come on, baby. Come on, Chanel. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there play. you go, Al. Right. Love it. Love it. We're going to rock out here for another five, four, three, two, two. One. One. All right, catch your breath and reset. All right. Very All nice. Very nice. What's, what's, the, what's the good morning? The good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Interlock your hands behind your head. Okay. Then we're going to hinge at the hips like this. Back is parallel to the sky. We'll come up. Then we'll squeeze in a squat. Oh, we're going to alternate okay. between the two. We're going to go good morning. Good morning. And then right into a squat. Yes. Good That's it. Practice set. The time is about to start right now. Y'all ready or not? We're ready. Let's go. In three. Hands behind the head. Uh -huh. Two. One. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Stand up. Go into that squat. Ooh. Ooh, do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, to that squat. Now pull your elbows to the sky behind you. Keep it going. Yeah. Okay. 
okay? Love it. Ow, What's I see doing, that Greg? rhythm, baby. Come on now, we are here for another five. <laughs> okay. Push those hips back, four. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said good morning, give me good three. Morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> we got one more. Boom. When's it, after, right. when's it afternoon? Awesome, <laughs> awesome job. So far, so good. Now okay. we're going to talk to our core. Okay. okay. Hello, so core. On the floor. Yeah. Okay, all we have to do is opposite elbow to opposite knee. Okay. Hands back here. We're going just like this, marching in place. Okay? Okay. Let me see it in five, four, three. Standing, this is standing two. oblique, oblique standing crunch. Standing oblique crunch. Let's go. Right, let's Boom. Go. Opposite knee to opposite elbow. Uh -huh. Well done. How long? We got Christmas in two weeks. We're going to go for at least about 30 to 40 seconds. So if we were to do this at home, would it still be about 30, 40 seconds? Absolutely. And make sure you get that Time is different here. You want about 20 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to rock out for five. It's, it's a fine four. Day. Three, I you do it for six two, minutes or something. I don't know. Chanel, you owe me the three whole seconds. Thing is Everybody three minutes. take a break. Chanel owes me three. Okay. Two. Let's one. go. Let's Thank go. you. Right, yeah, quick, quick, to talk. Feet. quick feet, real quick. So we're going to bend our knees to 90 degrees. Yeah. As fast as you can, you're going to move your feet. All right? Wait, wait for the oh, clock. Oh, oh, so, so. All right. Three, two, one. Quick feet. Let's go. Move it. Move it. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Come on, Al. Oh. Get him. Oh. Get him. Oh. Oh. Get him. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Oh. Yeah, you see no heels. Let's go. Come on. Oh, All right. Thank you so much. We got Wait, four moves. Thank you. Four, four minutes. Four for four. four. All right. I see a little, Ooh, little sweat. I'm like glistening. It. I'm glowing. Right. Now let's focus on a part of our fitness routines that often gets overlooked. Women's Health Editor in Chief Liz Plosser recently stopped by the third hour to teach us how to improve our balance and stability. I'm so excited to talk about balance. It is great for our bodies mm -hmm. from head to toe. Okay. Let me tell you a couple of the reasons why. Okay. First of all, balance and stability reduce our risk for injury. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very important. Second of all, it enhances our performance. So there's cool mm. science that when you combine balance boosting moves with a strength training program, you actually get better gains out of your gym workout. I believe okay. that. It builds our core muscles because as we're standing strong and taking mm -hmm. up space, we're mm -hmm. recruiting all of those muscles. Okay. okay. Um, and finally, there is research that suggests that it supports your memory as really? well as spatial cognition. Oh. Okay. Which is just a fancy way of saying how we move about the world and I our perception that, of space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So how can we test to see if we have any kind of skill when it comes to civility and balance? We have a couple of super quick and easy tests for you today. And the idea is to get better over time. So okay. do not stress out if you <clears throat> feel a little wobbly at first. Okay. The first one is the single leg stance. So okay. have a chair nearby, but mm -hmm. let's try not to use the chair at first. Mm -hmm. So your feet are going to be hip width apart, okay. feet underneath those hips. And then you're going to firmly plant your left foot mm -hmm. and raise that right leg. So you're going to bring it to perpendicular. Are you guys wobbling? I'm okay. We're okay. Oh, I'm okay. I mean, you guys are experts already. Wow. That's amazing. So that. if you're really good at it, you can close your eyes. But to start, oh. just just do that. And if you need to grab closed. onto the chair, you okay. can. Well, so oh, so the idea with my eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, it is an extra challenge. See how long you can hold yeah. it. Yeah. Then you're going to repeat that exact same move, just using the opposite foot. I actually. I love that you're in bare feet because well, your feet better? and toes are gripping the floor. It's called proprioception. That is actually really excellent for really? helping improve your balance. Wow. Yes. Now you've got great balance. Okay. When you can, you're yes. well balanced. And also, if you're feeling a little um, less stable on yeah. one side or the other, that's normal. The more we practice the balance boosting moves mm -hmm. we're about to go through, okay. the more even you will feel. Okay. okay, so now let's get to sitting. This okay. is called the sit stand. Mm -hmm. So you're going to adjust yourself just in the middle of the chair so you're not leaning against the back. Feet, again, about hip width apart. And you can put your arms in front of you, cross them. Great. And now push through your heels and your feet and come to standing. It's that easy. Take okay. a pause at the top and then right back down. Okay. okay, so you're gonna repeat this for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and your goal is to do as many as you can, as smoothly as you can. And this is helping with balance. This is helping with balance, that's okay. right. Okay. You are, um, yes, you're pushing through those feet, you're activating your core muscles, and you wanna get you know more of the sit stands over time. You can feel it. Right. Yeah, okay. you can feel it. Good. Okay, so now let's get into some moves that actually are going to improve your balance. Okay. So you can keep doing those tests over time and check you out. Actually, we're going to start with standing. Okay. okay. Okay, let's stand. We will get down on the mat in a minute. So the first one is just the simple forward lunge using your body weight. Uh -huh. Okay. So feet hip width apart again. Oh, I'm with this, by the way. And you are going to press through that left foot and then lunge forward. Tap your left knee against the ground. And while this is harder, you're going to come back. 
And for those okay. of us who have like mobility issues yeah. as far as yeah, like knee, knee joints or things like that. Yeah, so I would not, anything that feels uncomfortable or you're worried about your knee, I would not do the lunging. You can go a little smaller. Ooh. Yep. And we have some other moves for you too, Al. So you're going to repeat on uh, different right sides. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yeah, so that's the forward lunge. The next one, this is harder. Okay, this is more of is a Is this challenge. for the core, this next one? Uh, these all activate oh, your core. Okay. All balance moves will activate your core. We are getting to one. This one is called the single leg deadlift. So feet hip width apart again. Mm -hmm. You're gonna push through that left foot and now extend your right leg behind you straight and reach your arms full oh, yeah. forward. That's the deadlift. Yeah, try not okay. to yeah, that's, pop that's, your, pop your it takes chair balance. For, it takes balance. Now, yeah. if you're really great at this out of the gates, you can add a weight. Okay. Whoa, yes. whoa. Craig's not gonna add a weight yet. Eventually. <laughs> oh, no, I was, no, I was oh, just, he, I was being was silly. Joking. He was kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. exactly. Wait, Where would you, you hold the weight like this? this way? You could hold it in either hand and you would actually bring it down toward the floor. As oh, you're oh, that's oh, I can see. Oh, so oh. it definitely takes balance. Those are good. It's one of those things where we take it for granted, but when somebody has good balance, it's just it's a good thing in mobility. You know, the thing is, when we are walking through the world, that is actually a balance activity because if you think about it, you're on one foot and then yeah. the other. Exactly. So cool. these folks outside the window are like, "What, what is, is happening?" Wrong with Liz, thank you so much. <laughs> By it was the great to be here. You can yeah. find more tips on balance training and the latest issue of Women's Health. Thank, thank you, Liz. you so much. And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, our online community is growing by the day. Just scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of motivation in our Start Today newsletter and get the jump start we all need to improve our health. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Today All Day. on hashtag cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite dinner recipes that also make great leftovers. If you happen to be dining solo, these weeknight meals are hearty, healthy, and best of all, pretty easy to make, and you'll have a lot to share. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of feels like you need an occasion to cook. But guess what? You don't need to be going to a dinner party to make delicious food for yourself. Because you know what? A party for one? It's hashtag still a party. So I'm gonna show you how to get this party started with my delicious, flavorful, best all ever, and a crunchy, creamy kale salad. Dal is a staple in Indian cooking. It was always on my dinner table growing up, thanks to my mom. My mom and I still shop for our lentils at Indian markets, but you can get them wherever you get your groceries. Little tip for cooking lentils, super important to always rinse them before you cook them. You wanna rinse them until the water runs clear so we get rid of any debris, and then we're gonna soak them. This will allow it to cook faster, and you can soak them either overnight or at least up to 30 minutes. I have my pre-soaked lentils here, and now all I'm gonna do is drain the water out, like so. Get any residual lentils out. Can't leave any behind. They'll feel left out. Okay, I'm gonna let these hang out for a bit while we prepare the base of our dal. I've heated my stove to medium heat and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Let that heat up and then I'll work on my onions, garlic, and ginger. Adding a bit of olive oil here. Let that heat up. Now, I'm gonna talk about my aromatics. So, onions, garlic, and ginger. I cannot imagine any dal without these base ingredients. They're the aromatics that really impart a lot of flavor. It's gonna become really deep and rich and flavorful, especially when paired with a fat like olive oil. 
I've got one whole onion that I've diced here. I'm just gonna add it into my oil. We love that sizzle. And I just wanna saute the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. I'm adding them separately away from the ginger and garlic because I don't want these guys to burn while I cook them with onions. So while my onions are cooking, I'm gonna work on my ginger and garlic. By work on, I mean grate them. I'm using five cloves of garlic here because I love a garlic moment. If that scares you, you can take it down a notch, but I'm always gonna keep it up a notch. I'm just grating this on a microplane until they're nice and really fine. Grating the garlic this fine is gonna allow it to impart a lot of flavor onto this dal, especially when paired with those onions. I'm gonna be grating these forever. <laughs> Don't neglect your onions, okay? I wanna make sure these are happy too. Love garlic, I love garlic. No shame in my garlic game. That's why I'm adding five. Five cloves. We're starting off strong. This recipe is truly one of my favorite plant-based meal options because it's super flavorful, but it's also packed with protein from the lentils, really warming spices. It's one of my favorites. I can't believe I'm microplaning and also looking at a camera. <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> okay garlic there. Now it's time for our ginger. Again, we can't neglect our onions. We want them to be tender and translucent and a little bit golden before we add the garlic and the ginger, just so we have already some caramelization going on before we hit the garlic and onions. Microplaning the garlic and the ginger is nice because it almost forms this paste, so it's going to be really easy to cook in with our onions as well. Going with my ginger. Ginger is super healthy for you and actually it's garlic. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. That's so cute of me. I know my heart is warm too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still grating this ginger. You can leave, I'll still be here grating ginger. <laughs> this is why I have only one bicep on my right arm. <laughs> because of my ginger grating skills. When you cook the onions and garlic and ginger in a fat like olive oil, it's gonna really break down those flavors so it becomes super flavorful and aromatic. We want that when we're pairing it with something like a dal. I'm all done with my ginger. Got my ginger garlic minced grated situation here. My onions are looking tender, translucent, a little golden around the edges. So now it's the perfect time to add my ginger and garlic. You can see how it's kind of a paste. This is gonna be great for that flavor. I'm gonna cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions until all of the flavors really incorporate and it starts to brown a little bit. It smells so good. Now that my garlic and ginger have started to brown in with the onions, I'm gonna add my masala for my spices. My favorites to use here are my cayenne, my turmeric, cumin, and coriander. It's really important that you do roast these spices because you don't want that raw smell or that raw taste. You want it to be super well browned so that it's aromatic. It smells so good. Now that my masala smells really nice, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> now that my masala smells really nice and toasty, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste here because I really like to impart that really deep tomato flavor. And when you brown this tomato paste, it's gonna taste so good. When you're cooking the tomato paste, you want it to turn a very deep, dark red brick color. And again, nobody likes that raw tomato taste or smell, so you wanna really cook it through. Now that I've cooked my tomato paste in with my masala, it's time to add my crushed tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes here. There is no shame here. I love a canned tomato. I love convenience. You can use diced tomatoes as well. I love a canned tomato moment. I think especially if you're cooking for one, there's no reason why you shouldn't use what's already in your pantry. You wanna cook these tomatoes for about three to five minutes until they reduce and darken in color. Cooking the tomatoes in with the onions, garlic, ginger, and spices is gonna allow it to be a lot more flavorful. Lentils themselves don't have a ton of flavor on their own, so that's why adding all of these different ingredients and spices is gonna be really delicious for the actual dal itself. 
I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and pepper here. Now I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. And now we're gonna add some coconut milk. Instead of using a cream or a ghee or a butter, we're using coconut milk to give that same really delicious creamy flavor, but without the dairy. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. We're just waiting. We're a little impatient, but we're waiting. <laughs> we're almost there. We're making progress. I love adding coconut milk to lentils because it makes them super creamy. It looks like we're boiling. Now that we're boiling and in business, I'm gonna reduce to a simmer and let it cook for five more minutes. Mm. Smells so good. Now we're gonna add our lentils. We're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes until the lentils are soft and the curry gets really nice and thick. It looks so creamy already. Just wait till it's done though. All right, see you later. In about 30 minutes, so you know what that means, my doll should be ready. It's looking so nice, so thick and delicious, but there are a couple more things that I wanna add. I'm gonna add in a little bit of sneaky spinach. This is not really traditional, but I do like to sneak some greens in where I can. Just chopped it up. Gonna add that straight in there and stir it up until it wilts. going in there. So you're just gonna stir the spinach in until it wilts. Look at how thick that is. It looks so good. And the green adds some nice contrast to the red and yellow lentils, so it looks really aesthetically pleasing as well. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm also gonna add some fresh lemon juice, just for some acidity. You've got a lot of heavy flavors here, so it's really nice to add a bit of tang at the end. Straight into my pot. We love a little lemon zing. Mix that lemon juice straight in there. I'm gonna finish this all off by adding some fresh cilantro. The tender stems are okay, but I like to remove the thicker stems because those are a bit more bitter. You can totally chop this if you'd like, but I'm just gonna tear it roughly. Cause I kinda like those big pieces of cilantro. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. Keyword almost. And now it's time for me to serve myself. This doll is super versatile because you can eat it straight up as a soup, or you can also serve it with some naan or some rice. Look at how thick that is too. Ooh, it's so creamy. Here's my sneaky spinach. 
can't leave them behind. And then to garnish, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cilantro on top. Just a little for the picture, you know? This looks so pretty, I have to send a picture to my mom. She's gonna be so proud of me. Oh, and I gotta get that naan and rice in there too. This is such a party for one. Like, I love this for me. This is an amazing dish because it stores really well too, so you can totally freeze it or keep it in the fridge for up to a week. I think it is time for me to taste it. I'm gonna go in straight up. Mmm. I think my mom and I need to have a doll off. It was really good. I think this would impress her. Don't mind me while I take another few bites of this doll, but next I'm gonna show you a kale salad that you are absolutely going to love. Mmm. So good. You might be thinking, another kale salad? Sama, did we really need another kale salad? And to that, I say yes, we need this one. It is my favorite creamy, crunchy, savory kale salad that's really gonna make you want to eat your greens. The first step that we're gonna do to make this salad is make our croutons. This is a great way to use up any of your leftover stale bread. Your stale bread is not destined for the trash, it's destined to be croutons. All right, here's my loaf of bread. I'm just gonna slice this up, dice it a bit, and then we're gonna season it. When you're slicing bread, always remember to use a serrated knife so that it can cut through the bread a lot easier. So I really like nice, thick, and crunchy croutons, so I'm gonna cut the bread slices pretty thick so we can get it there. Should be good. Now I'm just gonna dice up these slices of bread. There's nothing better than a crouton in a salad. It really just adds that nice, crunchy, savory element. Plus, I will really just eat bread like whenever I can get an opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Sourdough croutons are my favorite because it's got that nice tang and with the savory elements that we're gonna add, like the spices, it's gonna be so good. I'm one of those people that likes the end piece of a loaf of bread. They exist, I'm one of them. Now that I've got my croutons, all I'm gonna do is drizzle them with some olive oil and then season with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Seasoning with some salt. 
some pepper. You can use your favorite seasonings here as well, but I love these three. Now I'm just gonna toss them. And you know what? This is a dinner for one, me being the one. So I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. Make sure the olive oil and spices really nicely coat the bread. These look nice and evenly seasoned, so now I'm just gonna transfer them to my parchment lined pan. I wanna make sure that these are nice and spread out so they get a really crisp and even bake. So I might even reserve some of these to bake off later so I can get that nice crisp crouton. Now I'm just gonna throw them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you stir them once during baking. Well, guess what? My croutons are done. They look nice and golden and crisp. So I'm just gonna let them hang out and cool while I make my dressing. For the base of my salad dressing, I'm using tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, it's simply sesame seeds that have been ground up into a paste that's similar in texture to a peanut butter. It is my favorite savory grounding base for sauces and dressings. To my tahini, I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard. Just for a bit of flavor. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Just a little. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this dressing to balance out the earthiness of the tahini. I also love a little tang in my dressings. It's gonna be so good. You want your salad dressing to be really bright and flavorful, especially when we're pairing it with a tougher green like a kale. All right, my lemon is in. I'm gonna whisk this a bit. Now I'm gonna add some of my spices. Got some freshly ground black pepper. Some salt. And for a little bit of spice, this seems to be the trend, some red pepper flakes. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. You'll notice that this dressing is starting to seize, which means that it's becoming a little bit difficult to mix. So all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cold water to help everything come together. You can add more or less water to get the dressing to your desired consistency. To me, a tahini-based dressing is really similar to a Caesar dressing, so I really like to use it on kale because there's nothing better than a really delicious kale Caesar. Look at how creamy this is. And no dairy. This looks really delicious and creamy to me. So I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on my kale. To prepare my kale, all I'm gonna do is remove these tough stems. I don't love these stems because they're a little bit too fibrous, so I really don't want them at my party. You can just tear it straight off and discard the stems. You could use a knife to chop this up, but tearing it is a lot more fun. 
Kale is a really good salad green because it's got all of these ridges that allow the dressing to really get all up in there. See ya. I like to keep the kale in bigger pieces here because when I marinate it in the dressing, it's gonna wilt down a little. I'm a kale whisperer. We're making kale fun again. Really? You thought you didn't need another kale salad? You were wrong. This is the only kale salad you'll ever need. And I'm not biased at all. This is completely impartial. It's not like this is my favorite kale salad or anything. Again, you could have definitely used a knife, but I just made the life choice not to. It's a lot more fun to tear it. Just gonna add my kale to my bowl. And this is where this dinner for one party gets really fun. I get to become a kale masseuse. I'm gonna add this dressing into my kale and just massage it so that the dressing gets all up into the ridges of the kale. Pouring that dressing straight in there, okay. And now I'm just gonna use my hands, they are clean, and massage my kale. Massaging your kale is super important because it helps to break down those tough fibers in the kale and it really gets the dressing all evenly coated inside the kale. Look at it! The dressing is already coating it super nicely and it's becoming even softer. Okay, I got a little bit too excited massaging the kale so now I'm gonna go rinse my hands off. The kale has really had a nice massage. It's feeling super zen so it's time to set it aside and I'm gonna prepare my add-ins. So I'm adding some tomatoes into the salad to add those really nice bursts of sweetness and it's gonna complement both the kale and the dressing really nicely. You can use grape tomatoes here, you can use cherry tomatoes. I find that these are a lot nicer and sweeter so that's why it's gonna be a great complement to this kale salad. That kale is so lucky though, it got a super long massage. <laughs> My favorite part about this kale salad is that you've got a lot of crunchy elements like these sunflower seeds and the croutons and some creamy elements like these beans and avocado. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice my avocado. So pretty. To dice this, I'm gonna dice it in the skin. So I'm just going to create the dicing inside so it makes it a lot easier to scoop right out and into my salad. I'm creating little hashtags in honor of hashtag cooking. And then I'm gonna add into my salad. Scoop it straight out. Make sure you get all the way to the peel, to the skin, so that you can remove the avocado easily, like so. Okay, this avocado is a bit resistant, it's fine. <laughs> All right, another half. Now we're moving on to another creamy component, my beans. These are gonna be really delicious because they're gonna add some protein but also be super velvety and creamy in the salad. Add these straight in. I'm using white beans or cannellini beans here but you can use whatever bean you'd like. Now I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds for another crunchy textural element. I'm gonna reserve some for the top. You can even use pumpkin seeds here if you'd like. And finally, for my croutons. Perhaps the reason you're interested in the salad in the first place? So these guys? I won't tell. I'm like kind of there with you. I'm just kidding, I love everything in this salad. I'm gonna reserve some croutons for the top as well, just to get that crunchiness. Now I'm gonna toss. Now I'm just gonna toss my salad together. There's so many fun elements going on here. It's a very exciting salad. And it's kind of pretty too. You got the tomatoes, which are nice and bright. Avocado. Finish it off, I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds on top. 
We're a little bit about aesthetics here, not gonna front. And some croutons too. And this is my kale salad dinner for one, which also means that I can eat out of this bowl and no one's really gonna know or care because it's just me. This is such a glamorous kale salad that I cannot eat it without taking a picture first. This will inspire any kale hater or kale skeptic to eat their kale, I promise. Just try it out. Now it's my turn to try it out. And even if I don't finish this all right now, this stores super well because it's just gonna marinate in its dressing for longer and get even more flavorful. Here I go. You just gotta get a little bit of everything. Some of the kale, the crouton, the tomato. Maybe it's too much for me to get a bit of everything, but I'm gonna try. Okay. I really am trying to get a bit of everything and it's not gonna work. Will it work? Okay. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, crunch from the sunflower seeds. Wait, I need a crouton. <laughs> really crunchy. So good. Can you hear that? You can hear that? Mmm. You know what? I think they're gonna be a lot of kale converts after they try the salad. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. Melvin here, happy to be filling in for Hoda on the Boost. We have a show full of feel-good stories, and if your New Year's resolution is to travel more, this half hour is for you. Harry Smith is going to share a few of his favorite stories from all over the country, and then later, a behind-the-scenes look at how the royal family tours the globe. But first, a unique program making a real impact on the lives of young people, working to keep them out of the criminal justice system by putting them to work in it. NBC's Laura Jarrett has that story. All rise. This is not your typical courtroom drama. From the prosecutors. Prosecution recommends 20 hours of community service. To the jury. Well, we're here to help them, not to punish them so much. Even all the way up to the judge. How do you wish to plea? Guilty or not guilty? Everyone here, a teenager with a big job, in charge of resolving real cases in Westchester County, New York. It's all part of a local court diversion program an alternative to a criminal trial that allows teens facing low-level misdemeanors a second chance. Up on today's docket, the case of a stolen bike. My client had absolutely zero intention of stealing someone else's property and causing concern to the victim. 17-year-old Aida Noel hopes to go to law school one day. I love my law and order. I love all my shows. Today, she's representing a peer. When I came in, I was ready to see the worst in people. I was ready for the kids to be closed off, for them to like not have any care. And every single client that I have had has always came into my meeting with a smile on their face. Her real mission in this work is what's known as restorative justice, a theory that balances accountability to the community with fair consequences. I think that is what is most important about youth court is not having that record, getting that second chance. When you have a record, there are so many things in your future that you just can't do. It's so much harder to get a job. Instead of a criminal record, a typical result here includes counseling and community service. This one mistake should not define their life. Connie Jones is the program's director and a legal assistant. 
How many kids a month would you say you're seeing? Between seven and 10. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. But that's, a, that's seven to 10 kids we saved. So that's a big deal. 18-year-old Alexis De La Cruz went through the youth court a few years back. Now he's studying to become a police officer. Everywhere I go, I'm aware of the law, and that makes me feel like a more powerful person. Knowledge is power at the end of the day. And he's not the only success story. Jones says the program is remarkably effective at making sure the kids who come through the door don't make the same mistake twice. You've only had one repeat, one repeat. in nine years. Yes. The program has become so popular, Joan says she has a waiting list of students more than willing to go through the intense, weeks-long training program. But 16-year-old Emily Portillo says it can be hard when judging kids her own age. I knew that we were going to take on cases, but I didn't think they were going to be real. Learning that they were real cases and like we're going to have the responsibility to make our statements and the questions, it was just like, oh wow, this is like actual serious stuff. Serious stuff, but with a rewarding outcome and friendships made along the way. Uh, all these people, they're like family to me, they're wonderful. On the night we saw the kids in action, they were gearing up to tackle the case of that stolen bike, gliding through cross-examination. Did you sell the bike for profit? Then it's time for closing arguments. The goal of Youth Court is to help their clients understand and repair the damages they have done to the community. The jury, now off to deliberate, huddled together in a hallway. He didn't really do this on purpose. Finally, the verdict is in. 15 hours of community service, six counseling sessions with a counselor from the Youth Bureau, and an essay to the Youth Court explaining your actions. Court is over for the day. But for Aida and so many others, the lessons will last a lifetime. I just find so much joy, like just pure happiness to be able to help others and be a voice for people who can't be a voice for themselves. Coming up, Harry Smith's visit to the Lost Kitchen, a one of a kind and very hard to get into restaurant in Maine, beloved by people all around the world. Harry's gonna show us what makes it so special after the break. We're back on the boost with the eye-opening travels of our guy, Harry Smith. First up, his trip to a high school in Pennsylvania where a group of students are shooting for the stars, working to become licensed amateur radio operators. They've even constructed their own antenna in hopes of talking to an astronaut on the International Space Station. Check it out. In a town near Erie, Pennsylvania. NA1SS, this is KC3SGV. A group of students are trying to contact someone who is not NA1SS, particularly easy NA1SS. to reach. This is KC3SGV. All those numbers and letters are ham radio call signs. NA1SS, NA1SS is the this International is Space Station. Three, two, one. The first Hello, amateur contact in space happened 40 years ago with the Space Shuttle Columbia. Hello, W1JXM. This is W5LFL. Uh, you're our first contact from uh, orbit. 
What advice would you Since give to then, a group called ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, has organized radio calls between astronauts and some million students worldwide. What do you do for fun on the space station? Over. Most of the time, adults do the setup. But at Harbor Creek High School, it's all about the students. Which license do you have? Uh, I have the technician general and amateur extra licenses. All of these students are licensed amateur radio operators, studying for a series of federal communications exams and passing to use radio waves to reach out to the world. My last contact was in Austria. But now, literally aiming higher, this space station call, years in the making, endless hours of after school and weekends of preparation. This is the one you use to yes. contact the space, space yes. station? Did you guys put all of this stuff together? We've set everything up from the antennas to the radios, to the power supplies, antenna controllers. We've set this whole event up ourselves. The students have a 10 minute window to make contact, then question astronaut Andreas Mogensen they can be very Assistant easy. Principal Drew Mortensen heads the Advanced Technology Club at the school. After attending an amateur radio seminar, he thought, I'll bet our students can do this. You have to hit a target. Right, exactly. You're hitting something that's 254 miles away, traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, and you're hoping that everything goes correctly. Like, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? No, right, exactly, no. The gym looks like it's set up for homecoming. Signs, balloons, you can feel the buzz as classes file in to watch the technology kids are psyched, anxious. Today, the students of Harbor Creek are on a journey to boldly go where few hams have gone before. The time has come. 15-year-old Giles Veit begins the call. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3SGV. The gym full of students wondering, will this work? NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3SGV. NA1SS. Giles calls again. KC3SGV. And again. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is KC3SGV. Finally. Hey, Commander Mogensen, we have you a 5-7, a pretty good signal. So, are you ready for some questions? I am ready for questions. Go ahead. Lots of the club members get to take turns. Living in space as a payoff for the hours of work they've invested. Why do you think that space exploration is important? Over. In 10 short minutes, the space station is out of range. For the students! What was it like hitting that button over and over? As soon as we heard Commander Mogison respond, that was such a relief, really. I'm just looking at the smile on your face. Yeah. What else are you feeling right now? Um, lightheaded. <laughs> Mr. Mortensen, is brimming with pride. Yeah. How big of an emotional investment was this for you? I love my kids. I do. I absolutely love them. And so for them to get to have that experience is huge. Why you become a teacher? Yep, absolutely. From kids on a mission to a one-of-a-kind kitchen, Harry also paid a visit to the lost kitchen in the woods of Maine where he shared lunch with the owner, Aaron French, to find out what makes this restaurant so very special. Fall in Freedom, Maine is as beautiful as one would imagine. The tiny hamlet, home to a restaurant where a reservation is as valued as a winning lottery ticket. Our host, Aaron French, owner of The Lost Kitchen. You made it. Thank you for coming. I made you a nice lunch today. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. I figure if you've come all this way, you're expecting to have something to eat. I am. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. Let's go. Aaron have welcomed us thing. with a mocktail. A Cheers. wonderful afternoon. Cheers. And we shucked oysters. Please, have a shot. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Ready? Total game changer. Mm. 
Yeah. Total. Wow. I'm excited because food is my tool for pulling out emotion. How lucky are we? So fortunate. That's the way you're supposed to feel when you sit at that table, you know? What do you think it is that's inside you that is this deep desire to make people happy or feel fulfilled? I've questioned that, and for a while, I thought that it was because I was a woman. And because as a woman, we want to give people love. That's been the feelings that I've innately just felt inside of me, um, wanting to care for people deeply. I'm feeling there's something really sort of unfair about this because I'm actually having lunch with you in a room that's normally filled with how many people? 53. 53? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who've been waiting for months and years to Lifetime. have this chance. Should you be lucky enough to dine here, the meal, or should we say the experience, lasts five hours or more. And the moment just, it slips away because you're having the best time and you're making people feel warm and you're making them feel like they belong here. Potatoes first. I would say it tastes like home, but it's better. Lunch exceeded all expectations. Delicious seemed too puny a word to use under the circumstances. The chicken's moist, so flavorful. So good. Wow. Erin's new cookbook, Big Heart, Little Stove, is filled with recipes from her restaurant and childhood. Do you say love can be tasted? You can't make delicious food if you're in a bad mood. So the key then would be, if you're in a bad mood and you're having people over, just order pizza. <laughs> That's so. probably a good idea. <laughs> with each recipe is a sentence or two, like an invitation to give it a try. I wanted people to feel like they weren't alone and that they were able to make mistakes. And you will make mistakes in the kitchen. And that's part of how you become a better cook. Is a cookbook a way for you to communicate with the people who may never get a chance to eat here? 100%. People break down and cry in here. And it still mystifies me. And that's part of this book was like, unlocking what was mystifying me and saying, what is it? Why are 60,000 people wanting to come here to eat? Why are they crying when they get here? <laughs> Why are they staying five hours and not wanting to leave? Because in its own way, it's almost food is therapy. Mm-hmm. Right? Food saved me. Food saved you. Oh, yeah. It was the only place that I could find something that I could feel like I was any good at something. When we come back, we'll go across the pond for a special behind-the-scenes look at royal travel. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the booth. Let's turn our attention now to the royal family. We're getting a, a very special perspective of the royals from behind the lens. Getty photographer Chris Jackson has been photographing the royal family for more than 20 years now. And now he's sharing his royal tour experiences and the stories behind his favorite photos through the years. Throughout the year, the British royal family will head off overseas uh, on behalf of the British government to visit various parts of the world. And that is based on where they haven't been recently, what fits with the policy of the British government at the time. Generally, there'll be a couple of these a year. Um, occasionally, they tie in with charitable endeavours and, and projects that the royal family are working on. So it's a great thing for a royal photographer. Uh, it's always exciting um, to get off, out and about around the world. When it comes to a, a royal tour, they are very well organised visits, of course. Events are planned down to the finest detail and occasionally there's a lot of formality. If it is something like a state visit, of course, there'll be all the pomp and the ceremony of a big royal arrival, inspecting guards of honour, ceremony, tradition, culture. These all form important parts of travelling with the British royal family. And, you know, there is often more low-key moments, the sort of quiet moments you get in royal tours, which are lovely to photograph. But it's that combination of the big pomp and ceremonial moments and the quiet moments behind the scenes, and they often come together to form the kind of fabric of what is a royal tour. For me, there's a huge amount of preparation that goes into these trips. As a photographer, I'll go through the program for the trip. I'll work out what different events require, uh, what different photography equipment. And, you know, it might be something like a state banquet where you have to wear uh, your dinner suit or something like that. So there's so many different considerations. The weather, um, footwear, you know, I've been on trips in the past where we've had to climb up into the foothills of the Himalayas. So, you know, everything takes a different approach. I've been lucky enough to travel with all members of the British royal family, you know, of course, from Queen Elizabeth, when she did travel, she was this iconic and hugely respected figure around the world, to our new King and Queen. And then, of course, there's the, uh, now the Prince and Princess of Wales, who've been on some fantastic trips over the last few years, some really special ones. I've done a huge amount of travelling with Prince Harry in the past, when he was a, a working royal, and that's been you know, incredibly, some of the most special moments of my life. I think the key is when you're with the Royal Family on a, on a trip abroad is be prepared because anything can happen. I think that's what I love about it. It's a sense of the unknown, which makes lovely, candid and, and colourful pictures. In Borneo, you, if you look closely, you can see that the lens is quite kind of steamed up because it was possibly one of the kind of humid environments I, I've been in with my cameras, but I suppose it was one of the most unusual royal handshakes I've ever photographed before. I think one of my absolutely favourite trips actually was, was somewhere I always wanted to visit, which is Bhutan with the uh, then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. And there was a particular moment when the, uh, the Duke and Duchess uh, were getting stuck into the national Bhutanese sport of archery. When the, uh, the Duke and Duchess gave it a go, I was you know, slightly nervous that there might be a wayward arrow coming my way, but I, I tucked myself in <laughs> behind someone else and it was a lovely set of pictures. I've been lucky enough to travel to so many places with our now king and queen. And I think, you know, one of my favorite trips of them was India. And, uh, you know, it's just the color and the vibrancy and the energy that you get when you visit India, which is really special. That was in 2013. And there's a particular shot at the Akshardham temple. They're framed by the beauty of this amazing building and, you know, they're looking at each other. And it's just, it's such a, a far cry from moments we get in the UK and, and so special to capture these moments. So that was, that was amazing. There's so many royal firsts. I remember Princess Charlotte receiving her first bouquet during an arrival into Germany. She took a big sniff of the bouquet and it just made a lovely photograph because it's these kind of candid moments that I suppose move away from the kind of the script which people warm to. And for me as a photographer, they are the ones that I love taking the most. One thing I will say is they do work incredibly hard on these trips. You know, it can be incredibly challenging to meet so many people and then go to a state banquet in the evening. And I've only got admiration for their work ethic. Um, a royal walkabout is an incredibly important part of the royal tour. It's, you know, an opportunity for members of the public around the world to meet members of the royal family, chat with them. 
firsthand and you know often you see these huge crowds in the most unlikely places and it's lovely you know it's great to see that and try and convey an element of that to the to the people back at home uh, and that's really exciting the royal family's fashion has inspired trends around the world for decades but for one viral tiktoker it's the timelessness of princess kate's wardrobe choices that draws her in now she's created her own royal size audience showing women everywhere how they can dress like a princess nbc's molly hunter has that story welcome to a series that i like to call kate middleton style on an amazon budget i don't know if y'all are the same but i am obsessed with her social media style maven morgan freeman has always been drawn to the grace and elegance of the princess of wales i vividly remember when they got engaged and she was wearing that navy blue dress and I was 12 at the time that's where it just like clicked for me I was like I have to dress like this woman I want to carry myself like her but it probably wasn't until these past two years that I got to the age where I was like you know what this is what I love and now Kate's influence continues on one of the biggest days of Morgan's life <laughs> I'm getting married in September and I bought the first wedding dress that I tried on because I had a very distinct vision in my mind, um, Kate's wedding dress. Her love for Kate's style has ignited Morgan's own fashion following. I love it! I am actually so in love with this. With over 3 million likes on TikTok, where she reimagines the royal styles for less. I cannot get over this $29 dress. There are girls that are on the younger side that don't want to follow fast trends. Then there's women that are 60, 70 years old, and they're like, thank you so much, you've saved my wardrobe. And I feel like I've created this really warm environment for women. I don't think y'all are ready for this. Star of the show, this maroon coat with the faux fur. I'm speechless. Let's put it on. The most viral look is definitely the maroon coat. It's a timeless piece that I feel like people can pull out around the holidays when it's cold year after year. When Kate comes out, it's like, I'm just waiting to see what she's wearing because I'm hopping on my phone to see if I can find something similar while saving people money. Her secret to creating a high-end royal look for less, it's pay attention to the details. Say a stripe doesn't align at the seam, to me that is like a big no-no. It just doesn't look cohesive. It doesn't look expensive. Um, another thing is like hardware and buttons on clothing. Even if it's a good silhouette, if there's a cheap button or a cheap zipper, I'm like staying away from that. I spend time, time, time digging. I've <laughs> regrettably spent probably hours of the night until 3 a.m. like scouring the internet. Like I know I can find trousers that look just like hers. I only share if I feel 100% confident, like this is a good outfit to put into the world because I want people to be happy with what they're getting and feel good in that clothing. But it isn't just the princess's wardrobe that this royal watcher is drawn to. Kate embodies is kind of like a poised power. So I feel like through her clothing, but then also just her, her energy, it's like this lady seems so delicate and like, royal but at the same time like so strong and bold morgan's crowning achievement helping other women feel confident with wardrobes that may never go out of style it like sparks this like childlike joy in me to put an outfit together i love to feel that for myself to feel so good in an outfit when you walk out the door like oh my gosh like i feel like i'm on cloud nine right now because my outfit is so like banging but doing that for other people is like tenfold Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. We've got one more video that's sure to leave you with a smile. Take a look. More than 50 years ago, a woman named Barbara Rico wrote a children's book, but despite her best efforts, the book was never published. That is until now. Barbara's grandson, Chad, took his grandmother's manuscript and illustrations done by an artist years ago and turned her dream into reality and then surprised her with the finished copy over the holidays. Oh my God, this is probably the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me in my entire life. <laughs> Well, I have to agree. That was incredible. Well done First to the grandson. She said it was the most beautiful gift she's ever gotten. The story does not end there. There's a happy ending, like every fairy tale should have. The book is called More, More, More. It's a story about gratitude and friendship. And guess what? Guess what? It is now an Amazon bestseller. That's all for today. We hope we were able to start your morning with a boost of positivity. And we'll see you next time with more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Hey everybody, welcome to Start Today. Now, as we settle into 2024, so many of us are looking for ways to uphold those New Year's resolutions. So if one of your goals is prioritizing your health, we've got just the thing for you. Our community is gearing up for another successful year. We've got health and fitness experts to help guide us all through it. So if you want to join in on the fun, just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with over a half million folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, we're going to share easy ways to help you look and feel your best, from simple self-care tips to superfoods that are great for boosting nutrition. Then later, we're going to kick off the new year with some fun workouts. This is Start Today. First up, let's see what our fitness leader, Stephanie Mansoor, had in store for this month's workout challenge. Steph, good to see you. Good to see you Happy too. New Year. Happy New Year. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, nice to see you. We got all of our, our friendly pages and interns here. Helps Look, us keep our costs down. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, you and the team over at Start Today uh, have a, a kind of a quick start guide. What, yeah. So what are the, the tips you've compiled, some of them, to get our year off on the right foot? You know, we're going to ease into the new year. Uh -huh. We are going to start off by committing to five minutes a day of exercise. Okay. We're going to start by eating a little healthier, adding in one vegetable a day, drinking a glass of water before you even get out of bed. Oh, and I'm going to show you some other messy. ways. It, yeah, well, just sit up. Sit oh, up before okay. you drink the water. This is very yeah, doable, yeah. Though. This is a very doable. doable. Yeah. And I'm going to be coming at you live over on Facebook when you go into our Start oh. Today Facebook group every day today, right after the show, oh, 10 a.m. Wow. Eastern time every day this week to wow. give you even more tips. So okay. to be productive at, in, in, in the morning, you say you need to start the night before. Yes. So you want to plan ahead. I want uh -huh. you to train your brain that when you go to sleep, you're seeing your clothes that are laid out for tomorrow, uh, for your, your workout, workout clothes. That's good. So when you wake up, you drink your glass of water, right. you get out of bed, you put on your workout clothes, and right away we start off with some stretching. So we bring one knee in towards the chest, mm -hmm. lower it down, then the other knee in. If you're someone that wakes up with stiff, achy joints, or if you have a tight low back, this is a great exercise to do right when you get out of bed, before you even go into the restroom to loosen and up your body. For balance. This is great for balance too, Al. Yes, exactly. So moving on into the bathroom here. Welcome. Hi. Well, hello. And Michelle and George are in my bathroom as well. Yes, they that, are. That weird at all. That weird at all. <laughs> They're going to start by brushing their teeth. So anytime you're in the bathroom, you know, first thing in the morning, I want you to open the feet wide while you're brushing your teeth, bend one knee, stretch that inner thigh, and then go to the other side and stretch the other ones. This is a really big bang. She's like, Mom, I morning. made it. <laughs> <laughs> big bang for your morning routine. Anything. Both. Good. No, so bending the knees, loosening up the hips while you're brushing, your, brushing your, teeth. your teeth. We now, can so no we're... longer stand still brushing our teeth, everybody. <laughs> so, Steph, seriously. Your teeth. So while you're brushing this? Yes. Is, 
So oh, yes, while you're brushing your teeth. Like now, while dangerous. you're shaving or doing your hair, yeah. you're going to okay. do some I'm calf out. raises here. <laughs> <laughs> so lifting up onto the tiptoes, lowering down. Squeeze those yeah. glutes at the top. Yeah, nice, oh, nice. No, like right up sorry. as high as you can. Okay. Yes, while you're brushing your hair, while you're getting ready in the bathroom. And again, we're trying to implement these little things in your day. Again, this isn't a huge workout, but, but it gets something you moving. Get yeah. started. We yes. can do that. We can all commit about, to that. Yes. Right, we okay. brushed our teeth. We brushed our hair. Yep. Now we're going to make our eggs. That's right. So we're whisking our eggs, and as we're whisking here, we're going to do some shoulder rolls. So rolling okay. those shoulders up, back, and down. Good. You can even drop one ear to one side here. Feel that stretch right oh, there, yeah. Greg? Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yes. And then if you're someone that's microwaving or putting something in the blender, we're going to do 10 squats. Okay. So you turn that thing on, and we go look down into that squat. Good. Press down through the heels you know to stand in Dylan's up. Dylan's defense, when she boils water, she does this. Yes. So it's like just great. around just throughout the day. Exactly. So it's just basically constant movement. Constant yeah. movement. Yeah. Constant yeah. movement. Constant yeah. movement. And then next week, once you do this for a few days, next week you're ready to go with our January challenge. This is great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And thank you guys, by the way. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Up next, today contributor Allie Love back with her series, Love Your Mornings. This time, she's sharing some creative self-care hacks. And we're going to take it back to the basics with tips to nourish and fuel our bodies. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Health and wellness is a key to start your start today. And sometimes that means doing small acts of self-care that can make a big impact in your life. Today, contributor Allie Love is here to do just that with some of her favorite natural beauty hacks. Coconut oil, especially in the hard form, is one of the greatest yes. inventions. I put it on my kids. I put it on my skin. Mm -hmm. I use it for everything. What do you think it's good for? All the rage. Yeah. Treatment buns. So I actually have it in my hair right now. I have a bun going yes. on. So I've lathered coconut oil, put it in my hair, pull my hair back. It's good for two things. One, yeah. hydrating the hair, which is most importantly, yeah. making sure it's, it's shiny, it's healthy. You can see my girl right here on TikTok putting it in, brushing it through, putting it in a bun. And the second thing that it's really good for is you're able to do two things at once. I'm at work right now with you, Hoda. Yeah. And I'm getting a treatment in my hair at the same time. So what happens when you wash out the coconut oil? How hair is shiny, feel? healthy, yeah, yeah, softer. Yeah. Like it's really important and it's great for blow dry. Yeah. So you just take a bunch and I literally just put it put right it, in. Put it Look in. at you. Look at just you. put it in there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Laying it down. And it's also shiny. You see my shine, honey? You see, see my shine. shine. By the way, I love just pure coconut oil on, on the, the skin. skin. All right. So this is interesting. People are looking for ways to regrow hair. Yes. Now, this is something that's on TikTok, on social media. And I will say, disclaimer on this one, try it. If it works for you, yeah. it works for you. A lot of celebrities, they really live by it, especially like Lala Anthony. This is rice water. So basically, you take rice, you put some water in it, you let it soak for 30 minutes, you put it in a spray bottle here. Wait, this is the stuff that usually you rinse out when you're washing your rice to yes. get rid of all that stuff. This stuff right here, you put it in your hair. It's supposed to promote hair growth. 
You can put a half a cup of rice. I'd say something around three to two to three cups of water. You let it soak for 30 minutes. You can rinse the rice if you're a little bit concerned, but I'll show you. This is all you do. Let Dump it soak. It in. It's like I know. Strain some... it, put it in a bottle, and put it on your hair. That's so two funny. to three times a week. Because when you have basmati rice, they tell you to wash it three or four times and yes. dump out that cloudy water. So you don't get you it. You use the cloudy water. Yes, we're using all things in our kitchen. All right, let's make luscious eyelashes. Yes. I no. love lashes. I feel like a lash and a brow makes the face. You yeah. don't need anything but some good brows and nice lashes. Right. But if you're anything like us, maybe yeah. we don't always want mascara. No, but we, we don't. We want to look like we do. Okay, so, so what this do you do? one is a new hack that I love. You take a lash curler, you curl your lashes, and you take a little brush. It could be Aquaphor, which <gasps> is the product I swear by. I love Aquaphor. Or petroleum jelly Vaseline. You curl the lash and then you brush it up. You and put it, Aquaphor on your lashes? On the lash. A little bit at a time. And you can see our amazing producer who's going to come up here, Eden. This is a before and after. Wow. Lift on the lash. That's just it, Aquaphor. And it doesn't get in your eye, it's no, fine. it's all it, good. Yeah, just and your brush. a thin, thin layer. Exactly. Um, continuing with the face, yeah. clay mask. Okay. So I have sensitive, delicate skin. Yeah. I don't always want to put, again, so many chemicals on my skin. No. A clay mask is really good absorbing that extra mo excess moisture out of your face, all of the oil without so, so many a, chemicals. This is a powder? So this is a powder mask. Yeah. This is a clay mask. You add water in, you mix it up, you have Wait a fun. Minute. This is, I do this at Is home. that what this is for? This yes. is for, okay. That's exactly what it's okay. for. Okay, okay. And you just mix it up and then you put it on your face. And I love to see this one working because it shows you your pores. And yeah, it you can oil. feel it. Yes. Oh, I know. It's kind of it. like toothpaste. The menthol, I don't know if it's working, but it's working, honey. Yeah, you it's put working. it on, it dries out. Yes. All right, let's get to a J-Lo favorite. J-Lo favorite. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to look like J-Lo? Basically, this is just what olive is oil. This is olive oil, and for you, maybe you think of a salad. I think of JLo's body. Yes. It's perfect, right? <laughs> yes. What she does is she lathers on olive oil when she walks the red carpet. Hydration. She does? Yes, hydration of the skin gives you that shine, that glow. It really I does. I usually takes it, take it, I'll put a little lotion. I love a scented because I don't want to smell like a garden salad. Yeah. And I'll put it on. Two things about this, I will yep. say. If you are wearing this, out on a night out, be sure to have someone else apply it for you because yeah. getting oil on your clothes is the worst. And secondly, if you're someone in a hot climate, be careful not to wear this out in the sun. Yeah, so you want a burned. night out, you know what I mean? Looking right. fresh, fly in Now, how about a lip scrub? Oh, this is my favorite. Okay, so. You know why? I feel like I think of your girls for this mm. one. All you need to do, you can take that coconut oil yeah. in your kitchen, olive oil, or coconut oil, or any oil that's hard, With put some sugar. That's and it. here, sugar, tea, what is it, a teaspoon of sugar? Yeah. Mix, mix the, the medicine, medicine go, go down. down. Yeah. Well, it makes mix your lips hydrated. Yeah, you mix it up, yeah. and then you have this kind of like hard scrub. And you just put it on your lip, put on your rub lips. it on. Uh-huh. Okay, and what's this? What's yeah. this bottle right here? Oh, those are essential oils. Okay. So you, you can make it smell inside. good. You make it smell good. Yeah, and again, all of these things are beneficial for anyone who's looking to kind of revamp their makeup wardrobe, take care mm. of their skin, eliminate chemicals out of your kitchen, Good. out of your house, out of your Excellent. product. Love it. Love it, Allie. Love you. Just ahead, we're going to have two Start Today workouts to help us all get a jump start on our fitness goals. But first, let's fuel our bodies. We're going to reveal the best superfoods to add to your daily meals right after this.
We're back with more Start today. Now, if you're looking to get your health back on track, but not sure where to begin, we have got you covered. Wellness expert, Dr. Christian Gonzalez walked Hoda and Jenna through the simple things we can all do to nourish our bodies. I like your opening concept. It's like in medicine, people are always treating the illnesses, but there's a whole nutrition piece yeah. that's so important that sometimes gets overlooked. Big time. Yeah. And we can make these interventions so quickly, a lot of bang for the buck, easy stuff to get us in good health. Okay. Amazing. So starting the day, let's start first thing in the morning. Yeah, we know we, yeah. We yeah everybody water. knows we need to drink water, yeah. but first of all, how much and how can we kind of spruce it up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we wake up and we're dehydrated. Yeah. We lose about a cup of water every single morning or through yeah. the night. Yeah. So in the morning is one of the best times we could drink water and get into the habit is in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So how much did you drink? So, so realistically, the easiest way to think about it is eight ounces of water every hour until 10 o'clock. About 80 ounces of water a day. We want to make sure we're hydrating. We can use electrolyte-rich uh, salts. This is a sea salt. It's going to be electrolyte-rich, meaning we're getting more hydration out of our water just by adding a little pinch and putting it Adding a right. pinch of, of salt. real salt, but real it needs salt. to be what you, a special kind a of special. salt. This is sea salt. Sea, right? okay. sea salt. So when you say a pinch, are we tasting it in the water or just it dissolves? No, you won't you won't, it. You won't so it won't be it. super oceany, salty okay. water. You just a little dab. A dab, put, put it, it in, in there. shake it up. There you go. And you're right. and how can you do all your drinking of water in the morning? Like You can drink. A, listen, if you're parched, that means you're dehydrated. All right, let's talk about hormonal health. When it comes to hormones... We need to focus on two big pieces for our nutrition. Okay. Okay. Fats, right? And we have some beautiful nuts and seeds, some mm -hmm. chia seeds, uh, some pumpkin seeds, walnuts, okay. almonds, and we need protein. Okay. okay. Both are going to help our hormones and the production of hormones. So what should we have and how many portions do you think? Right. So it depends on the person, yep. but having enough protein and eating enough protein is essential. Making sure you're having it with every meal, getting a good amount of fat. Mm -hmm. With every single meal. And, Let's and talk about the yeah. What's yeah. on this in, on this board right Move here? Move on over to the, this board. This is my favorite board here. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, okay. These are the most powerful foods for your hormones. All of the foods on this platter here are going to help reduce inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do we got? Berries, some of the most powerful potent and blueberries. antioxidants yeah, okay. to reduce that inflammation. Mm -hmm. that blue. Look at that. Is this ginger? This is turmeric. Turmeric. This is one of the best spices for reducing inflammation mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. Healthy hormones. Talk this is my this. favorite. Yeah, yeah tell my us. Favorite. This is a secret. These are broccoli sprouts. They have 100 times more nutrition. And, and, uh, than broccoli. Than broccoli. Essential nutrients for reducing and helping our So hormones. if people are looking for these in the grocery store, these are the microgreens. Is that what they're called? Right. They're microgreens. And the broccoli is the best. It's, it's potent. Can you taste? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to help with detoxification of estrogen in our body. Okay. We have too much estrogen. It's potent. Yeah. It helps it balance And it. garlic. And garlic. And, garlic. and you can powerful. put the cook with these, too. Uh -huh. Lena has to just eat the sprout, okay. just like I did. Okay. Right. Green tea. This, this, is, is, a this is a crazy hack. This is a crazy hack. And I thought about this to myself, and yeah. I go, okay. A lot of people drink alcohol. Yeah. Can be an oxidative stressor in our body. Right. Inflammation again. Right. Cellular damage. Guess what reverses that? Or what? guess what protects us? Green tea, wow. one of the most important. So if you know you're going to go and have a drink, order a green tea first or afterwards? Before and after. Before and after. after. This right. is going to protect the cells in your mouth and your body, reducing oxidation. Let's right. move on to some other sort of bloating issues. <laughs> okay. How many of us are bloated? How many of us are struggling yes. with bloating, yes. complaining about it? Yes, always. I got, I got a little intervention. Before every meal, teaspoon of apple cider okay. vinegar oh my and water gosh. creates oh. more acidity, helps with your digestion. Okay. But I thought you want to be alkaline, no? Not when you're eating. You, yeah. want, you want your stomach to be creating the most amount of acidity to break down that. Okay, okay. so what's okay. this guy? These are probiotics. Yeah, now, you probiotics. should take them. Yeah. The, the question is, should we be having probiotics? They could help with bloating, but I actually like fermented foods better. Mm. Tempeh, miso. Kefir, so try kimchi. to get it in your food. Exactly. But so if, you, if you don't eat if any not, of that, take, take one of these. Now, now, I've never heard of this. Taping oh. your mouth shut? <laughs> this, this is, this <laughs> People have wanted us to do yes, it. They've been requesting it. Yeah. Listen, so. listen, there are some kooky things, but this actually really helps. So what do you do? Why do we bloat? A lot of us are mouth breathing, sucking in air through the night and through the day. So mouth taping has been actually one of the best interventions I have found for helping people when they're sleeping, taping their mouth and reducing bloating in the morning. Okay, but I feel like I breathe through my mouth all day long. No, I'm scared. But during the, mouth, during the day, it's okay because you're breathing out, right? Yeah, but we actually should be nasal breathing all throughout the day and night for our health. <laughs> we should mention before trying this, talk to your doctor. Okay, let's talk about nighttime routine. These are yeah. just some simple things yeah. we can do. Oh, 
like nighttime, better sleep starts yeah. as soon as the sun goes down, okay? Yeah. So you want to make sure, one, you're moving your body throughout the day, yeah. increasing slow wave, restful sleep. Mm -hmm. Himalayan salt lamps, it's going to be reducing the light, the, the strong light in the house, getting the Himalayan warm tones in the, in mm. the, in the house. Love it. Eye mask, beautiful for yeah. sleep. Mm -hmm. But here's one of my favorite things, creating a ritual around your sleep. Yeah. Turn off your phone. Yes. Turn off the TV, the computer. About an hour before, turn it off. And then make sure you're creating a ritual like journaling, light stretching, taking mm. a nice bath, mm. not eating late, mm -hmm. cooling the house. So creating Do a ritual, uh, redu reducing the nervous system, getting your body Relax. These are all things we can do. I know. It's like it's not a big deal. We could try this tomorrow and see if it works. Thank all of these you. things. Dr. Dr. G, thank you for coming to see us. Thank we really you. appreciate so it. Smart. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Coming up, we've got a workout to start the year off right. All you need is four minutes. Plus, we're going to show you some moves to help improve balance and stability. We'll be right back. We're back and time to get moving. First up, we're gonna start with some easy exercises you can do in a matter of minutes. Here's fitness coach Akeem Emmons to show us how it's done. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so how do we get this started? What, what, what's the point of four? How do you do get a, to a whole workout in four minutes? Yeah. First and foremost, you've hired a professional. My okay. name is Coach Akeem Emmons, and I think that the big myth is that we need a lot to do a lot. So yeah. today we're just going to utilize our body weight. Okay. We're going to be working for time. Okay. We're going to get a full body workout within right. four minutes. My goal it. is for you guys to break a sweat. If you don't, the $20 bet that we made earlier is all ah. yours. Wait, what? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. The first one, Cactus and Seal Jack. Yes, Cactus. All right. So we all done the jumping jack before. Uh -huh. So with the cactus jack and seal jack, cactuses will look like this. Uh -huh. Reach from the sky, elbows into the back pocket. Uh -huh. And then okay. the seal jacks, we're going wide like this. So we might need a little bit of real estate. What if you're low impact? And if you're low impact, well, you just step out to the side. All right. You know, find a little music, okay? okay. All right, all right find your groove. All right, guys, let's go for it. Okay. In three, two, reach for the sky. One, let's go. Big reach, yeah. elbows into the back pocket. Uh -huh. Come on now. All right. Okay. Nice, Chanel. Okay. Boom. Right. Getting that heart rate up. Waking up that chest. Okay. Now we're going to go into our seal jacks. Arms straight out, out to a T in three. Keep moving. Two, one. Let's do it. Arms straight out. Okay. There it is. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Come on, baby. Come on, Chanel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go, Al. Right love it. Love it. We're going to rock out here for another five, four, three, two, <laughs> One. One. All right, catch your breath and reset. All right. Very All nice. Right. Very nice. What's, what's, the, what's the, good the good morning? The good morning. Good morning. Interlock your hands behind your head. Okay. Then we're going to hinge at the hips like this. Back is parallel to the sky. We'll come up. Then we'll squeeze in a squat. Oh, we're going to alternate okay. between the two. We're going to go good morning. Good morning. And then right into a squat. Yes. Good afternoon. That's your practice set. The time is about to start right now. Y'all ready or not? We're ready. Let's go. In three, hands behind the head. Uh -huh. Two, one. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Stand up. Go into that squat. Ooh, do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, to that squat. Now pull your elbows to the sky behind you. Keep it going. 
Okay. Love it. Ow, I see that Frank? rhythm, baby. Come on now, we are here for another five. <laughs> okay. Push those hips back, four. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said good morning, give me good three. Morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. We got one more. Boom. When's it after? Right. When's it afternoon? <laughs> awesome job. So far, so good. Now okay. we're going to talk to our core. Okay. okay. Hello, so core. On the floor. Yeah. Okay. All we have to do is opposite elbow to opposite knee. Okay. Hands back here. We're going just like this, marching in place. Okay. 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 Let me see it in five, four, three. Standing, this is standing two. oblique. oblique crunch. Standing oblique crunch. Let's go. Right, let's Boom. Go. Opposite knee to opposite elbow. Uh -huh. Well done. How long? We got Christmas in two weeks. We're gonna go for at least about 30 to 40 seconds. So if we were to do this at home, would it still be about 30, 40 seconds? Absolutely. And make sure you get that. Time isn't between. different here. You want about 20 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna rock out for five. It's a well, fine four, four, three, three, You do it for six two. minutes or something. I don't know. Janelle, you owe me the three whole seconds. Thing oh, sorry, Everybody sorry, take sorry, a break. Sorry. Janelle owes me three. Okay. Two. Let's one. go. Let's Thank go. you. Quick feet. Quick feet, real quick. So we're gonna bend our knees to 90 degrees. As fast as as you can, you're gonna move your feet, all right? Wait, wait for the car. Oh, 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 sorry. All right, three, two, one, quick for you, let's go, move it, move it. Ooh, come on, Al. get him, get him, get him, yeah, come on, yeah, you see no heels, let's go. Come on, five, four, three, two, one, go, come on, baby, let's go, let's go. Good job. Uh, oh, baby. Oh, <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We got four moves. Thank you. Four, four minutes. minutes. Four well, for four. All right. See a little, little sweat. Top, I'm like glistening. It. I'm glowing. <laughs> now let's focus on a part of our fitness routines that often gets overlooked. Women's Health Editor in Chief Liz Plosser recently stopped by the third hour to teach us how to improve our balance and stability. I'm so excited to talk about balance. It is great for our bodies mm -hmm. from head to toe. Let okay. me tell you a couple of the reasons why. Okay. First of all, balance and stability reduce our risk for injury. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very important. Second of all, it enhances our performance. So there's cool mm. science that when you combine balance boosting moves with a strength training program, you actually get better gains out of your gym workout. I believe okay. that. It builds our core muscles because as we're standing strong and taking mm -hmm. up space, we're mm -hmm. recruiting all of those muscles. Okay. okay. Um, and finally, there is research that suggests that it supports your memory as really? well as spatial cognition. Oh. Okay. Which is just a fancy way of saying how we move about the world and our perception that, of space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So how can we test to see if we have any kind of skill when it comes to civility and balance? We have a couple of super quick and easy tests for you today. And the idea is to get better over time. So okay. do not stress out if you <clears throat> feel a little wobbly at first. Okay. The first one is the single leg stance. So okay. have a chair nearby, but mm -hmm. let's try not to use the chair at first. Mm -hmm. So your feet are going to be hip width apart, okay. feet underneath those hips. And then you're going to firmly plant your left foot mm -hmm. and raise that right leg. So you're going to bring it to perpendicular. Are you guys wobbling? I'm okay. We're okay. Oh, okay. I mean, you guys are experts already. Uh, That's amazing. So that. if you're really good at it, you can close your eyes. But to start, oh. just just do that. And if you need to grab closed. onto the chair, you okay. can. Well, so oh, so the idea with my eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, it is an extra challenge. See how long you can hold yeah. it. Yeah. Then you're going to repeat that exact same move, just using the opposite foot. I actually. I love that you're in bare feet because well, your feet better? and toes are gripping the floor. It's called proprioception. That is actually really excellent for really? helping improve your balance. Wow. Yes. Now you've got great balance. Okay. When you can. Okay. You're yes. well balanced. And also, if you're feeling a little um, less stable on one yeah. side or the other, that's normal. The more we practice the balance boosting moves mm -hmm. we're about to go through, okay. the more even you will feel. Okay. okay, so now let's get to sitting. This okay. is called the sit stand. Mm -hmm. So you're going to adjust yourself just in the middle of the chair so you're not leaning against the back. Feet, again, about hip width apart. And you can put your arms in front of you, cross them. Great. And now push through your heels and your feet and come to standing. It's that easy. Take okay. a pause at the top and then right back down. Okay. okay, so you're gonna repeat this for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and your goal is to do as many as you can, as smoothly as you can. And this is helping with balance. This is helping with balance, that's okay. right. Okay. You are, um, yes, you're pushing through those feet, you're activating your core muscles, and you wanna get you know more of the sit stands over time. You can feel it. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. you can feel it's good. it. Okay, so now let's get into some moves that actually are going to improve your balance. Okay. So you can keep doing those tests over time and check you out. Actually, we're going to start with standing. Okay. okay, let's stand. We will get down on the mat in a minute. So the first one is just the simple forward lunge using your body weight. Uh -huh. Okay, so feet hip width apart again. Just at home with this, by the way. And you are going to press through that left foot and then lunge forward. Tap your left knee against the ground. And while this is harder, you're going to come back. 
And for those okay. of us who have like mobility yeah. issues as far as yeah, you know, like knee joints or things like that. Yeah, so I would not, anything that feels uncomfortable or you're worried about your knee, I would not do the lunging. You can go a little smaller. Ooh. Yep. And we have some other moves for you too, Al. So you're going to repeat on uh, different right sides. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yeah, so that's the forward lunge. The next one, this is harder. Okay, this is more of is a Is this challenge. for the core, this next one? Uh, these all activate oh, your core. Okay. All balance moves will activate your core. We are getting to one. This one is called the single leg deadlift. So feet hip width apart again. Mm -hmm. You're gonna push through that left foot and now extend your right leg behind you straight and reach your arms full oh, yeah. forward. That's the deadlift. Yeah, try not okay. to yeah, that's, pop, that's, your, that's, pop your It takes chair balance. Forward. It takes balance. Now, yeah. if you're really great at this out of the gates, you can add a weight. Okay. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa. Craig's not gonna add a weight yet. Eventually. <laughs> oh, no, I was, no, I was oh, just, he, I was being was silly. Joking. He was kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, wait, Where would you, you hold the weight this way? You could hold it in either hand and you would actually bring it down toward the floor. As you're oh, oh, that's oh, I can see. Oh, so it oh. definitely takes balance. Those are good. It's one of those things where we take it for granted, but when somebody has good balance, it's just it's a good thing in mobility. You know, the thing is, when we are walking through the world, that is actually a balance activity because if you think about it, you're on one foot and then yeah. the other. Oh, so cool. these folks outside the window are like, what, what is, is wrong happening? With Liz, thank you so much. <laughs> By it was the great to be here. You can yeah. find more tips on balance training in the latest issue of Women's Health. Thank, so, thank you, Liz. you so much. And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, our online community is growing by the day. Just scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of motivation in our Start Today newsletter and get the jump start we all need to improve our health. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Today All Day. on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite dinner recipes that also make great leftovers. If you happen to be dining solo, these weeknight meals are hearty, healthy, and best of all, pretty easy to make, and you'll have a lot to share. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of feels like you need an occasion to cook. But guess what? You don't need to be going to a dinner party to make delicious food for yourself. So you know what? A party for one? It's hashtag still a party. So I'm gonna show you how to get this party started with my delicious, flavorful, best all ever, and a crunchy, creamy kale salad. Dal is a staple in Indian cooking. It was always on my dinner table growing up, thanks to my mom. My mom and I still shop for our lentils at Indian markets, but you can get them wherever you get your groceries. Little tip for cooking lentils, super important to always rinse them before you cook them. You wanna rinse them until the water runs clear so we get rid of any debris, and then we're gonna soak them. This will allow it to cook faster, and you can soak them either overnight or at least up to 30 minutes. I have my pre-soaked lentils here, and now all I'm gonna do is drain the water out, like so. Get any residual lentils out. Can't leave any behind. They'll feel left out. Okay, I'm gonna let these hang out for a bit while we prepare the base of our dal. I've heated my stove to medium heat and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Let that heat up and then I'll work on my onions, garlic, and ginger. Adding a bit of olive oil here. Let that heat up. Now, I'm gonna talk about my aromatics. So, onions, garlic, and ginger. I cannot imagine any dal without these base ingredients. They're the aromatics that really impart a lot of flavor. It's gonna become really deep and rich and flavorful, especially when paired with a fat like olive oil. 
I've got one whole onion that I've diced here, and I'm just gonna add it into my oil. We love that sizzle. And I just wanna saute the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. I'm adding them separately away from the ginger and garlic because I don't want these guys to burn while I cook them with onions. So while my onions are cooking, I'm gonna work on my ginger and garlic. By work on, I mean grate them. I'm using five cloves of garlic here because I love a garlic moment. If that scares you, you can take it down a notch, but I'm always gonna keep it up a notch. I'm just grating this on a microplane until they're nice and really fine. Grating the garlic this fine is gonna allow it to impart a lot of flavor onto this dal, especially when paired with those onions. I'm gonna be grating these forever. <laughs> Don't neglect your onions, okay? You wanna make sure these are happy too. Love garlic, I love garlic. No shame in my garlic game. That's why I'm adding five. Five cloves. We're starting off strong. This recipe is truly one of my favorite plant-based meal options because it's super flavorful, but it's also packed with protein from the lentils, really warming spices. It's one of my favorites. I can't believe I'm microplaning and also looking at a camera. I love that for me. Okay, garlic there. Now it's time for our ginger again. We can't neglect our onions. We want them to be tender and translucent and a little bit golden before we add the garlic and the ginger, just so we have already some caramelization going on before we hit the garlic and onions. Microplaning the garlic and the ginger is nice because it almost forms this paste, so it's gonna be really easy to cook in with our onions as well. Going with my ginger. Ginger is super healthy for you, and actually so is garlic. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. That's so cute of me. <laughs> I know my heart is warm too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still grating this ginger. You can leave, I'll still be here grating ginger. <laughs> This is why I have only one bicep on my right arm. <laughs> because of my ginger grating skills. When you cook the onions and garlic and ginger in a fat like olive oil, it's gonna really break down those flavors so it becomes super flavorful and aromatic. We want that when we're pairing it with something like a dal. I'm all done with my ginger. Got my ginger garlic minced grated situation here. My onions are looking tender, translucent, a little golden around the edges. So now it's the perfect time to add my ginger and garlic. You can see how it's kind of a paste. This is gonna be great for that flavor. I'm gonna cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions until all of the flavors really incorporate and it starts to brown a little bit. It smells so good. Now that my garlic and ginger have started to brown in with the onions, I'm gonna add my masala for my spices. My favorites to use here are my cayenne, my turmeric, cumin, and coriander. It's really important that you do roast these spices because you don't want that raw smell or that raw taste. You want it to be super well browned so that it's aromatic. It smells so good. Now that my masala smells really nice, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> now that my masala smells really nice and toasty, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste here because I really like to impart that really deep tomato flavor and when you brown this tomato paste, it's gonna taste so good. When you're cooking the tomato paste, you want it to turn a very deep, dark red brick color. And again, nobody likes that raw tomato taste or smell, so you wanna really cook it through. Now that I've cooked my tomato paste in with my masala, it's time to add my fresh tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes here. There is no shame here. I love a canned tomato. I love convenience. You can use diced tomatoes as well. I love a canned tomato moment. I think especially if you're cooking for one, there's no reason why you shouldn't use what's already in your pantry. You wanna cook these tomatoes for about three to five minutes until they reduce and darken in color. Cooking the tomatoes in with the onions, garlic, ginger, and spices is gonna allow it to be a lot more flavorful. Lentils themselves don't have a ton of flavor on their own, so that's why adding all of these different ingredients and spices is gonna be really delicious for the actual dal itself. 
I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and pepper here. Now I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. And now we're gonna add some coconut milk. Instead of using a cream or a ghee or a butter, we're using coconut milk to give that same really delicious creamy flavor, but without the dairy. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. We're just waiting. We're a little impatient, but we're waiting. <laughs> we're almost there. We're making progress. I love adding coconut milk to lentils because it makes them super creamy. It looks like we're boiling. Now that we're boiling and in business, I'm gonna reduce to a simmer and let it cook for five more minutes. Mm. Smells so good. Now we're gonna add our lentils. We're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes until the lentils are soft and the curry gets really nice and thick. It looks so creamy already. Just wait till it's done though. All right, see you later. In about 30 minutes, so you know what that means. My doll should be ready. It's looking so nice, so thick and delicious, but there are a couple more things that I wanna add. I'm gonna add in a little bit of sneaky spinach. This is not really traditional, but I do like to sneak some greens in where I can. Just chopped it up. Gonna add that straight in there and stir it up until it wilts. going in there. So you're just gonna stir the spinach in until it wilts. Look at how thick that is. It looks so good. And the green adds some nice contrast to the red and yellow lentils, so it looks really aesthetically pleasing as well. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm also gonna add some fresh lemon juice, just for some acidity. You've got a lot of heavy flavors here, so it's really nice to add a bit of tang at the end. Straight into my pot. We love a little lemon zing. Mix that lemon juice straight in there. I'm gonna finish this all off by adding some fresh cilantro. The tender stems are okay, but I like to remove the thicker stems because those are a bit more bitter. You can totally chop this if you'd like, but I'm just gonna tear it roughly. So I kind of like those big pieces of cilantro. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. Keyword almost. And now it's time for me to serve myself. This doll is super versatile because you can eat it straight up as a soup, or you can also serve it with some naan or some rice. Look at how thick that is too. Ooh, it's so creamy. Here's my sneaky spinach. 
can't leave them behind. And then to garnish, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cilantro on top. Just a little for the picture, you know? This looks so pretty. I have to send a picture to my mom. She's gonna be so proud of me. Oh, and I gotta get that naan and rice in there too. This is such a party for one. Like, I love this for me. This is an amazing dish because it stores really well too, so you can totally freeze it or keep it in the fridge for up to a week. I think it is time for me to taste it. I'm gonna go in straight up. Mm. I think my mom and I need to have a doll off. It was really good. I think this would impress her. Don't mind me while I take another few bites of this doll, but next I'm gonna show you a kale salad that you are absolutely going to love. Mmm, so good. You might be thinking, another kale salad? Sama, did we really need another kale salad? And to that, I say yes, we need this one. It is my favorite creamy, crunchy, savory kale salad that's really gonna make you want to eat your greens. The first step that we're gonna do to make this salad is make our croutons. This is a great way to use up any of your leftover stale bread. Your stale bread is not destined for the trash, it's destined to be croutons. All right, here's my loaf of bread. I'm just gonna slice this up, dice it a bit, and then we're gonna season it. When you're slicing bread, always remember to use a serrated knife so that I can cut through the bread a lot easier. So I really like nice, thick, and crunchy croutons, so I'm gonna cut the bread slices pretty thick so we can get it there. Should be good. Now I'm just gonna dice up these slices of bread. There's nothing better than a crouton in a salad. It really just adds that nice, crunchy, savory element. Plus, I will really just eat bread like whenever I can get an opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Sourdough croutons are my favorite because it's got that nice tang and with the savory elements that we're gonna add, like the spices, it's gonna be so good. I'm one of those people that likes the end piece of a loaf of bread. They exist, I'm one of them. Now that I've got my croutons, all I'm gonna do is drizzle them with some olive oil and then season with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Seasoning with some salt. 
some pepper. You can use your favorite seasonings here as well, but I love these three. Now I'm just gonna toss them. And you know what? This is a dinner for one, me being the one. So I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. Make sure the olive oil and spices really nicely coat the bread. These look nice and evenly seasoned, so now I'm just gonna transfer them to my parchment lined pan. I wanna make sure that these are nice and spread out so they get a really crisp and even bake. So I might even reserve some of these to bake off later so I can get that nice crisp crouton. Now, I'm just gonna throw them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you stir them once during baking. Well, guess what? My croutons are done. They look nice and golden and crisp. So I'm just gonna let them hang out and cool while I make my dressing. For the base of my salad dressing, I'm using tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, it's simply sesame seeds that have been ground up into a paste that's similar in texture to a peanut butter. It is my favorite savory grounding base for sauces and dressings. To my tahini, I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard. Just for a bit of flavor. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Just a little. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this dressing to balance out the earthiness of the tahini. I also love a little tang in my dressings. It's gonna be so good. You want your salad dressing to be really bright and flavorful, especially when we're pairing it with a tougher green like a kale. All right, my lemon is in. I'm gonna whisk this a bit. Now I'm gonna add some of my spices. Got some freshly ground black pepper. Some salt. And for a little bit of spice, this seems to be the trend, some red pepper flakes. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. You'll notice that this dressing is starting to seize, which means that it's becoming a little bit difficult to mix. So all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cold water to help everything come together. You can add more or less water to get the dressing to your desired consistency. To me, a tahini-based dressing is really similar to a Caesar dressing, so I really like to use it on kale because there's nothing better than a really delicious kale Caesar. Look at how creamy this is. And no dairy. This looks really delicious and creamy to me. So I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on my kale. To prepare my kale, all I'm gonna do is remove these tough stems. I don't love these stems because they're a little bit too fibrous, so I really don't want them at my party. You can just tear it straight off and discard the stems. You could use a knife to chop this up, but tearing it is a lot more fun. 
Kale is a really good salad green because it's got all of these ridges that allow the dressing to really get all up in there. See ya. I like to keep the kale in bigger pieces here because when I marinate it in the dressing, it's gonna wilt down a little. I'm a kale whisperer. We're making kale fun again. Really. You thought you didn't need another kale salad? You were wrong. This is the only kale salad you'll ever need. And I'm not biased at all. This is completely impartial. It's not like this is my favorite kale salad or anything. Again, you could have definitely used a knife, but I just made the life choice not to. It's a lot more fun to tear it. Just gonna add my kale to my bowl. And this is where this dinner for one party gets really fun. I get to become a kale masseuse. I'm gonna add this dressing into my kale and just massage it so that the dressing gets all up into the ridges of the kale. Pouring that dressing straight in there. Okay. And now I'm just gonna use my hands, they are clean, and massage my kale. Massaging your kale is super important because it helps to break down those tough fibers in the kale and it really gets the dressing all evenly coated inside the kale. Look at it! The dressing is already coating it super nicely and it's becoming even softer. Okay, I got a little bit too excited massaging the kale, so now I'm gonna go rinse my hands off. The kale has really had a nice massage. It's feeling super zen, so it's time to set it aside and I'm gonna prepare my add-ins. So I'm adding some tomatoes into the salad to add those really nice bursts of sweetness and it's gonna complement both the kale and the dressing really nicely. You can use grape tomatoes here, you can use cherry tomatoes. I find that these are a lot nicer and sweeter so that's why it's gonna be a great complement to this kale salad. That kale is so lucky though, it got a super long massage. <laughs> My favorite part about this kale salad is that you've got a lot of crunchy elements like these sunflower seeds and the croutons and some creamy elements like these beans and avocado. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice my avocado. So pretty. To dice this, I'm gonna dice it in the skin. So I'm just going to create the dicing inside so it makes it a lot easier to scoop right out and into my salad. I'm creating little hashtags in honor of hashtag cooking. And then I'm gonna add into my salad. Scoop it straight out. Make sure you get all the way to the peel, to the skin, so that you can remove the avocado easily, like so. Okay, this avocado is a bit resistant. It's fine. <laughs> All right, another half. Now we're moving on to another creamy component, my beans. These are gonna be really delicious because they're gonna add some protein, but also be super velvety and creamy in the salad. Add these straight in. I'm using white beans or cannellini beans here, but you can use whatever bean you'd like. Now I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds for another crunchy textural element. I'm gonna reserve some for the top. You can even use pumpkin seeds here if you'd like. And finally, for my croutons. Perhaps the reason you're interested in the salad in the first place? So these guys? I won't tell. I'm like kind of there with you. I'm just kidding, I love everything in the salad. I'm gonna reserve some croutons for the top as well, just to get that crunchiness. Now I'm gonna to toss. Now I'm just gonna to toss my salad together. There's so many fun elements going on here. It's a very exciting salad. And it's kind of pretty too. You got the tomatoes, which are nice and bright. Avocado. Finish it off, I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds on top. 
We're a little bit about aesthetics here, not gonna front. And some croutons too. And this is my kale salad dinner for one, which also means that I can eat out of this bowl and no one's really gonna know or care because it's just me. This is such a glamorous kale salad that I cannot eat it without taking a picture first. This will inspire any kale hater or kale skeptic to eat their kale, I promise. Just try it out. Now it's my turn to try it out. And even if I don't finish this all right now, this stores super well because it's just gonna marinate in its dressing for longer and get even more flavorful. Here I go. You just gotta get a little bit of everything. Some of the kale, the crouton, the tomato. Maybe it's too much for me to get a bit of everything, but I'm gonna try. Okay. I really am trying to get a bit of everything and it's not gonna work. Will it work? Okay. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, crunch from the sunflower seeds. Wait, I need a crouton. <laughs> really crunchy. <laughs> so good. Can you hear that? You can hear that? Mmm. You know what? I think they're gonna be a lot of kale converts after they try the salad. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. We're gonna start this morning with a new series for a new year. We're calling this one, A Day in the Life. And no better place to start than spotlighting educators in our public school system. Craig Melvin recently shadowed a hardworking middle school teacher whose average day is anything but and emblematic of the millions of educators all across the country. Every day across America, they rise before many of us. 6.15 in the morning here in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. We're about to knock on the door and tag along with the teacher for the day. Hey! hey good morning. What's up, Ryan? You? Craig Melvin. Nice to meet you. Ryan Hardesty and his wife, Melissa, Melissa have two sons, Ben and Grayson, still sleeping. Oh, uh, hi, Melissa. It's your neighbor, Craig. <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom was a teacher. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So That's she, awesome. was, she was up at O'Dark 32. So as soon as you get in, it's ground running. Yeah, usually um, by the time I drop my son off to get at the babysitter to catch the bus and then uh, kind of run in the door and usually the kids are there within five or 10 minutes. Soon, we're on our way. Well, what's this area like? Really close to the community, supportive of the kids, supportive of the school. Hardesty drops his seven-year-old son, Ben, off and we reach Highland Middle School by 7.43. This is the office, huh? This is it. Us and, what, 800 of our closest friends. Teaching here was his first job out of college. He's been here 15 years and goes to great lengths to keep his kids engaged in the social studies lessons he teaches. For his work, he was selected by the Pennsylvania Department of Education as the state's Teacher of the Year in 2023. This is very quiet. Yeah. Calm oh, before the storm. Just say that. The storm starts at 8.30 with the first class of seventh graders. The right. dim lights are a sign of the times. Interactive right. whiteboards replacing the chalkboards of my day. Each student also has a tablet provided by the school. Right now, they're studying everyday life in ancient Egypt. Part one says you're going to create a narrative, a story. He hovers, advises, trying to get them to build on what they've learned. 
The second class starts with morning announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance. With liberty and justice for all. Hardesty stays put in room 203 while students move in and out. After two classes of the Pharaohs, he moves on to Lewis and Clark for a class of eighth graders at 10 a.m. There's a lot of participation in Mr. Hardesty's class, moving desks, forming teams to work on projects together. 1045 is study hall. Some students passing the time with cards invite me to play war. I haven't won a hand yet. At 12.15, Hardesty gets a half hour for lunch. He spends it in the teacher's room. He may be the teacher of the year, but Hardesty insists many of his colleagues are more deserving of the award. Next, prep period, when we find some time to talk. When did you realize that you, you actually wanted to teach? I think in high school, uh, you, know, you look at good social studies teachers that you had and you think, I, I think I'd really like to do that. To be a teacher, it's a little bit about liking the subject that you want to teach, but it's a lot more about wanting to work with kids. How has it changed in, in the 15 years you've, you've been teaching? In the years immediately after COVID, I think you were seeing students just struggle to be in a space with other people and be surrounded by other people all day and be in a chair and a desk and listen to instruction all day. Classes resume at 125 and finish with dismissal at 245. The fleet of yellow buses rumble off in formation. Hardesty picks up his son at his school. Oh, oh, hi, Ben. At 415, Hardesty helps Ben with his homework, followed by playtime in the backyard. After, we sit down with Ryan and Melissa. She's an educator too, a speech pathologist. You both spend all day working with children that aren't your own, and then you come home and you have two small boys. <laughs> You're surrounded by children every day, all day. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we really enjoy it. It's definitely hard. Yeah, you know, the mental load, it can be a lot. But it's also really rewarding to get to watch kids grow. One day, if, if one of the boys comes to you and they say, you know what? I want to go into education. I want to be a teacher. What would you say? Be honest. I think I'd say go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a great profession. I think it's uh, a great opportunity to make a difference. The day winds down with family dinner at 628, followed by a bedtime story, a final lesson before the day is done. Our spotlight continues with Chanel Jones. She went to her hometown of Wichita, Kansas to meet Miss Pow Pow, an educator whose students love her so much they put her on TikTok so the world would fall in love with her too. When I walked into the classroom to interview her yesterday, I was like, wait, I know her. <laughs> like, not only do I know her, I went to elementary school, middle school, and high school with her. I was like, Shay? <laughs> so now she's affectionately known as Miss Pow Pow. Her name is Miss Lachey Pow. And she went viral on TikTok. Not just viral, she had 10 million views. As you can see, her students love her. And you're about to see why. That is the moment high school history teacher Lachey Powell went viral on TikTok. What is this? Wait, go ahead. The video viewed over 10 million times shows sophomores at Northeast Magnet High School near Wichita surprising their beloved teacher with a special gift. I just lost it. I, and, and I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know what was in the bag. It was just the idea of the thank you. I opened it and I was like, wait, I can see those, those numbers, like those numbers are saying everything. So what was in the bag? A customized Steelers jersey, Miss Powell's favorite team. <laughs> Miss Powell, affectionately known as Miss Pow Pow by her students, isn't afraid to rock the Steelers black and gold in Chiefs country. It's a fandom that started decades ago during a chance meeting with the then young quarterback, for the University of Colorado. I was able to meet Cordell Stewart. I was 12 or 13. I was like, oh, he's gonna be my husband. I'm gonna grow up and marry Cordell Stewart. And um, he obviously went to the, the Steelers and I was like, well, that's my husband's team. So what is it that makes Miss Powell so special to her students? She pushes us to our full potential. One thing she always preaches is learning and growing. She is a very difficult teacher, but it's because she knows we can do it. And it just teaches us that 
no matter how hard an assignment is or no matter how hard something can be in life, we can overcome it. Those sentiments echoed by Matt Creesman, the former principal at Northeast High. She holds students to high standards. She builds great relationships with them. But every now and then you'd have a rough day and one of the ways that I could make myself feel better was to go sit in her class and see what it's all about. Even after teaching for 22 years and working a second job, Ms. Powell hasn't lost her passion. When they understand kind of like the method to your madness, when they get it, it it's everything because you can take them to places that they don't even think they can take themselves. One of Ms. Powell's biggest champions, her mom, a frequent visitor at Northeast Magnet. She passed away in 2020. And so many of us remember your mom. She's the reason why I am who I am. She pushed me. She pushed me the way I push my students. And I really do believe it's her spirit, the spirit of um, my mom moving through all these people and all these great things mm. that are happening, saying, little girl, you did all right. <laughs> I think you did okay. We're going to evaluate him, his job performance. With the outpouring of love for this Steelers diehard in Kansas shows how exceptional Miss Pow Pow really is. Teachers give everything to do this job. It's not for the faint of heart. We thank you for trusting your young people with us. You always question, you always wonder. This is now finally after 22 years saying, you did a good job. You did a good job. I love it. I love it. I love it. What does it mean to you to see all of your students here? This is actually just a fraction of your students and the love that you're getting so far this morning. Oh, my gosh. It is. It's, it's overwhelming. It means so much. It really does. I don't, so. Well, you mean so much to us. So I think it's time to do something special for Ms. Pow Pow. Don't you guys think so? Yeah. All right. We know you're a Steelers fan, even though you know we're in Kansas City Chiefs country, so I can't even believe I'm doing this. But they know that you're a fan, too. Do they? They do. So they actually want to do something special for you, and they are giving what? you two tickets do to that. an upcoming game, any Don't game you that. want. Yes, they are. Can we what? Get yes. <laughs> wait a minute. What? Well, wait a minute. Oh, wait. You know what? what? We actually have someone special to give you the tickets. Is there anybody here that can give her the tickets? Anybody? Oh my God! Okay, right here. Well, Ms. Papa, on, on behalf of myself and the oh Pittsburgh Steelers, we would like to present to you two tickets oh to man. one of this season's games. Oh, wow. So you better go out and enjoy yourself and have a great time. Oh, But I would man. like to also, in the process, yes. give you my autobiography. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. We met way back in Colorado. We did. You remember? I remember. She didn't think you'd remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was a story, and there was a story that happened all the way up to this point, so you'll have it. a chance to read everything about so it. So now here's the thing. Don't go anywhere so that way, you know, she can get her pictures and all that. I feel like we should do one more thing for Miss Powell. Powell, don't you think so? Okay, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. I know it's kind of hard to top, but we shared your story with Intrepid Travel, and they want to give Miss Pow Pow a $5,000 voucher wow. to go anywhere she wants in the world. No! A dream vacation. This is insane! And your kids here. No. Let me tell Thank you guys about you. Ms. Lachey Powell. She doesn't talk about it, but she oh, works geez. two jobs as a teacher. Yes. It's not always oh, easy. She's wow. here day in and day out, and I know you haven't given yourself any time for self-care. So with that $5,000, my friend, you can go anywhere in the world. Oh, my god! How much do we love Ms. Powell Powell? Oh. Thank you so much. What would you like to say? 
in behalf of teachers everywhere. Uh, we talked about the fact that we know your mom is just smiling from heaven yes, this morning. Yes. Her mom was a spunky woman. She would come yes. to the classroom, help her decorate, help decorate for prom. Yes. What would you like to say? I would just like to say to teachers everywhere, keep doing what you're doing. You are changing lives. Every sleepless night, all that grading, all that feedback, everything you do, it's all worth it. it it's worth it. Congratulations. We appreciate you. Congratulations. Hold on. Who's there today? Savannah. Come on. Carson. Yes. Come on. I feel like I'm in between. Let me not you. be in between. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. New couple alert. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Coming up, we're shining a light on a worthy cause that's making sure every kid starts the day with a healthy meal. Stay with us. We're back here on The Boost with a look at how impactful a healthy meal can be for students. The organization No Kid Hungry is on a mission to bring breakfast to the classroom. And we visited one school in California to see the difference it makes. It's the morning rush. Dropping off, playing, getting to class. Good morning, guys. Let's get in line. Hello. Ready? Here we go, kiddos. In most schools, the first bell starts the day. Class, class. Yes, yes. Waterfall. Shh. Perfect. But at Bing Wong Elementary School in San Bernardino, California, it means breakfast is served. That's because every morning starts with a meal in the classroom, a priority for school principal Dorothy McIntosh. It's the first meal of the day before our scholars can meet the cognitive demand that we are asking um, them to meet. The kids were quick to tell us how they feel without breakfast. I feel like my 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 stomach is growling a lot. I feel like grumpy and I want to be and I don't want to do stuff. No Kid Hungry helped the San Bernardino City Unified School District, which has 73 schools and more than 46,000 students, roll out the Breakfast in the Classroom program in four schools this year. The nonprofit estimates about 15% of children experience hunger in the county. Robin Hernandez manages the program here in California. There's a lot of barriers just to for kids getting breakfast. Sometimes transportation issues uh, arise or it's not always easy to get to that school breakfast. The school's food chain starts with Warren Ryan and his nutrition services team in the district. When we look at the difference in, in a traditional breakfast model, which is done in the cafeteria before the bell and breakfast in the classroom, is the biggest difference is kids have to choose, I'm going to eat or I'm going to play with my friends. And most kids will choose to play with their friends. Breakfast in the classroom for grades K through five adds up to some impressive math. About 600 meals a day, 3,000 meals a week, and more than 100,000 breakfasts for the year in just one school. I would foresee that we can see more than 3 million meals alone in breakfast. The assembly line starts early. Prepping, baking, and wrapping all the meal bags the kids pick up and distribute in class. I like the fruit. I say the donuts. The egg and the 
Biscuit. Warren says the breakfast team needed to win over skeptical teachers who were worried that the classroom meals would eat up lesson time or worse, make a mess. We work with every single site, every principal and every teacher to make sure that they have what they need and they know that, that it's not supposed to be a burden, that we want to feed kids because it's our privilege. Principal McIntosh says so far, the program gets an A. We've noticed now less visits to the health office for stomach aches. We noticed that our scholars are much more ready right at the beginning of the day to get started learning. We have way less um, discipline concerns um, than we had before. I'm going to come around and check on everybody. Breakfast also takes place during a period called social and emotional learning. It gives me energy to draw and do my work and stuff. When kids get to check in and talk before class. That gave us 122. Hmm, this is a hard one, guys. For students and teachers like Adam Bogarin, breakfast in the classroom fills both their hearts and their bellies. Now they want to be here. Uh, learning is going to take place, but before that, they're going to have a full tummy and be able to enjoy the day. Good things, Good things are going to come, are going to, to, come, come to, to me. To me. Moving on to another doggone good idea. It's a classroom where kids and dogs are learning side by side. And just wait until you see the results. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> That's what it started morning on. So it's not exactly your normal school greeting, but at Hanby Elementary in Wilmington, Delaware, it's just the way Brooke Hughes' first graders like it. I Hughes has always been an animal lover, and after fostering several puppies during the pandemic, a light bulb went off. What did the school say when you said, so I have an idea, right. I want to bring puppies to the classroom? Right, there was a lot of questions, um, but they said, after I kept telling all the research about how dogs and puppies, you know, can increase, you know, productivity and mental health, they said, all right, you get one day. That one day turned into the rest of the school year and the beginning of Foster Tales Puppy Therapy, a program Hughes created that she says has changed how her students learn. We've seen a benefit in their reading scores because if they have puppy time, if the puppies are asleep, they have to read to them. And so their reading confidence has soared. And the kids that were like, you know, hesitant to pick up a book and read, they couldn't wait to read to a puppy. These days, these first graders' classmates include a pair of eight-week-old Husky Pit Bull mixes, Kelsey and Graham, fittingly a tribute to their favorite Philadelphia Eagles players not far away. Hughes brings Kelsey and Graham home every night, but during the days, they've taught these kids to do more than just cuddle and play. The empathy with each other and the patience with each other, I've seen that being a huge growth since before we had puppies. Every morning, they have to do a little check-in. How are you feeling today? This year, almost every day, they circle excited, and I say, how are you feeling today? Like, I'm excited, because I get to come to school with puppies and you. As a teacher, you can't ask for a lot more. I can't that. ask for it. I mean, if you, I think my number one job as a teacher in this grade is to make school fun, make learning fun, the rest will come. And it's coming quick. Just look at the poster Sydney made. Will you read it for me? Okay. Okay. Adopt a dog because they are playful and they like treats and they like naps. They do like naps. 20 puppies have now come through Hughes' classroom before finding their forever homes. Lincoln, why do we want these puppies to be adopted? So they can have a home. We want them to find a home forever, right? And this video she posted of her kids and the puppies bonding went viral with nearly 3 million views. People lost their TikTok minds. <laughs> yeah. And I had no idea it was going to blow up. Why do you think it resonated? I think seeing the joy that the kids had and they fell in love with kids reading to them, of course. That puppy love has helped all of her students, including Logan, who is mostly nonverbal and uses this device to communicate. I like to read to Kelsey and Grant. He just came out of his shell. He came out of his shell, but he also taught us that he knows more than we knew. He was reading an above grade level book to the puppies. Wow. Good job. Good job. Woof. It's not just the kids that benefit, but the puppies too. If they weren't here, they would be in a cage most of the day at the shelter. 
And here they're being socialized. They're learning all kinds of different sights and sounds and smells. Socialization for the puppies. Oh yeah. Learning for the kids. Yep. I mean, who wouldn't want to learn like this? It's hard not to love adorable puppies, right? Are you being adorable? Are you yeah, being adorable, of. Graham? Oh, whoa, Bumble! <laughs> Are you trying to? Whoa, that was a French one. <laughs> Welcome to The Boost. A fascinating trend is spreading across college campuses as influencing becomes more and more of a viable career path. Some universities are actually adding it to the curriculum. NBC Savannah Sellers has that story. This isn't your conventional college course. I think you could have been a lot more direct with the hook, like, let's see if Duke students can do the jerks. Instead of essays, TikToks and recording rather than writing. Here at Duke University, students are getting an education in influencing. Is it crazy to you guys that during a class at Duke, you're making TikTok videos? Yeah. This is really the only class I've been taking since I've been here where it's like, it's about what's going on right now. And they're putting their new skills to use. I gained 33,000 followers since I joined this class. Oh my goodness. I just, had a, you I just had a TikTok hit 600,000 views. And you feel it's directly related to how you're doing in this class, what you're learning. Pay attention yeah. to details. What is trend jumping? Remind us real quick. The course is called Building Global Audiences, and the 35 students in it collectively have 5 million followers. But the professor, Dr. Aaron Dinan, believes it's less about going viral and more about building a platform. So is this course for someone who wants more TikTok followers? You can take the course if you want more TikTok followers, but that's not necessarily what I'm trying to get you there. A big part of what I'm trying to do in the course is help you understand that there is a business structure behind social media. Some of the students in there who are still college students, hundreds of thousands of followers. I mean, that's valuable, right? The core of the class is that audience is almost more important than everything else. If you can have the greatest product in the world, but if nobody knows about it, then it's useless, right? It doesn't matter. So you always need to start any sort of entrepreneurial endeavor thinking, well, how do I reach people? Which includes hopping on trends, like I did with Dinan. Bingo, you get to go to the airport tomorrow. Airport? I'm not going to the airport. Or targeting your content to perhaps fellow Duke students. Classrooms across the country are picking up on the trend, from Owens Community College in Ohio to East Carolina University, where viral video maker Mr. Beast is helping launch a new creator program. And at USC, Professor Robert Kozinets wrote an entire textbook on it. I think people might hear this story and think, 
a college class that teaches you how to get Instagram followers, is that really worth college credit? What would you say to that? You have to be thinking about this is a bigger phenomena, something that's worthy of study by social scientists, not just a how to you know, hold your camera and take selfies. When you're an influencer, you're running your own business. You know, you are getting brand deals for yourself. You are shooting your own commercials. Essentially, you are editing them. Content creator Gigi Robinson, who never studied influencing in college, has over 140,000 followers on TikTok. She says learning these skills in school would have been a huge help. I think teaching influencer marketing and the creator economy in classrooms is really important because we need to teach the art of entrepreneurship. For these students of Dr. Dinan's class, they are ahead of the curve. Stick around for more fun stories right after the break. with one more uplifting story for you. Check it out. The anticipation was building, so a little baby in Spain had one ring left on her stacking rings toy. She could barely contain her excitement. Take a look. <laughs> Mission accomplished. The little things in life, don't they make life so sweet? Let's go. Very sweet. Thank you so much for joining us today here on The Boost. We hope we spark some joy for you today. And we will see you right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. And this series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. Hi, and welcome to our Today All Day Mind Matters special. You know, this month we're celebrating mental health awareness, a very important topic for everyone, but especially young people here in America. The youth mental health crisis is all too real. So we want to celebrate the people helping to fight it and normalize those conversations. Good example, musician M. Byhold. You may have heard her song, Numb Little Bug. It's her debut single. It's everywhere. It's about M's experience with antidepressants. The earworms blow up TikTok, prompting fans to share their own mental health stories. Last year I had a song called Groundhog Day that was doing well on TikTok and all of a sudden like labels were reaching out and my dreams were coming true very quickly but at the same time I had started on antidepressants and I didn't realize that they could take the highs away as well as the lows and um, I had a conversation with my mom where I was like my dreams are coming true why am I not as happy as I expect to be and she was saying that sounds a little bit ungrateful and I was saying, it's not ungrateful, let me find the words for you, and then basically wrote Numb Little Bug. Do you ever get a little bit tired of life? Like you're not really happy, but you don't want to die. Like the viral TikTok launched singer-songwriter M. Byhold into stardom. Like your body's in the room, but you're not really there. Like you have empathy inside, but you don't really care. Like you're fresh out of love, but it's been in the air. I'm a past repair. In February, the single captured number one on Spotify's global viral 50 chart. 
And in April, Numb Little Bug landed M at the top of Billboard's Emerging Artist Chart. Today, the song has been streamed nearly 250 million times. Do you remember the first time a fan came up to you and said, M, I heard your song Numb Little Bug, and it affected me in, what did they say? During the tour, um, I had a few people come up to me and tell me that like they had tried to commit suicide last year and had, you know, kind of recovered and, and found help, but also found my music. And that's the most meaningful thing I can get out of any of it. The fact that they like felt they had support through what I was writing. And those are probably honestly my favorite moments from tour. And I'm obviously, I'm so happy that they're still here and getting help. What is your history with mental health? Is there any from your childhood or when you look back on your, your young life, do things come to mind? Um, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety, but I also feel like a lot of people in this generation have it. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Let's go. Anxiety <laughs> society, sister. We're, we're part of it. Me too. <laughs> yes, sir. But it was getting to a point uh, during the pandemic where I was like, I had a mood tracker app and I had so many lows every day that I was like, I need to do something about this. And I had an appointment with a psychiatrist and within 15 minutes she prescribed the meds and I, I was kind of taken aback that it, you know, didn't take a longer conversation to, to do something as drastic as that, but I was willing to try. Did you think about other alternative ways to kind of deal with this as far as maybe going to therapy or whatnot? Um, I've talked to a few therapists and, and still haven't found the right person for me yet, but it is an active search. And I mean, I tried different versions of the medication and just decided that wasn't the route for me. But again, for some people it really is. It, I think it's just finding what's best for you and also making sure you talk to the people around you as well. And what role has music played in your mental health journey? Music has always been my form of therapy. It's just, it's the way that I process my emotions best. It's a flow state when I'm writing and there's nothing quite like it. I have it on good authority that at your concert last night, you actually have another song that's unreleased called One, Two, Three, Four, Five that also deals with the nature of mental health. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, I wrote one, two, three, four, five with a couple of friends of mine about panic attacks and using the, the counting to five method uh, to get over them. Because I've had my own experience, not to the worst extent of panic attacks, but you know, where you, you get like choked up and you can't breathe and the whole world yeah. kind of caves in on you a little bit. And no, it well. I, I have this phrase that's like dance through your depression. Like I, I think we need to sort of band together and find positive ways to describe these really tough things that are going on. My generation has a history of, and, and others, of not discussing these issues. So we, we hide that. That's where that suffering in silence idea comes from, and the stigma on mental health. I mean, I love your bravery in, in the writing of the song and the recording of your personal feelings, how you do it with such courage, and you're so unabashed about it. And look, that's so relatable. Do you feel like your generation has a better time of discussing the topics of mental health? Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember I was making a video and I had a pill bottle in it and my parents were like, are you sure you want to show the pill bottle in this video? Because that's a sign of weakness. I mean, that's just what their generation grew up on and that makes sure. sense. But I was like, we just talk about it and we laugh about it because that's the only way to get through. I mean, in, in my mind. So I have no shame <laughs> attached. Well, I love it. What did your family say about Numb Little Bug when they heard it? The whole thing? I think the first time they were like, wow, you're really, you're really saying all that. And I was like, yeah. Um, but I think as they've seen the response and the comments and the DMs and people saying like, you know, after hearing this, I went to therapy or I talked to my family, I think they get it now. Like a numb little book that's got to survive, that's got to survive. Access to mental health resources is another major hurdle for black and brown communities. And even just talking about the topic can still feel very taboo. So I spoke to one inspiring teacher in Los Angeles about the creative ways that he's bringing those desperately needed resources to his own community and students. Take a look. Whenever you decide to go to therapy, whatever you do, you want to know the questions to ask to find the right therapist for you. But a lot of times we don't know the questions to ask. It's the same thing finding your favorite restaurant, finding a pair of shoes that fit you gotta try if you want. For BJ Williams, mental health is a calling. So BJ, your friends and family know you as the mental health guy, huh? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm the mental health <laughs> dude. How did that happen? Uh, man, you know what? I actually started when I started going to therapy for myself, and then I started doing this work that I'm doing now, and so yeah, that gave me the moniker of the mental health guy. My initial 
uh, intro into therapy was actual couples therapy with a girlfriend. In, in, during that time, my older brother died by suicide. And I left that relationship and a week later got into individual therapy. Your, your friends, like what did your friends think about you going to therapy? Did you tell them? Yeah, it was great. They were very supportive. And then I found out that some of them had gone before as kids or as teens. They just never spoke right. about it. And here I am, I'm like, yo, man, I got to go to therapy today. And all of a sudden it was, yeah, B, I went to therapy before. And I was like, well, why, how come you didn't say anything to us about it? So it kind of just opened up the, the, the conversation within, within my network. Why do you think that? Why do you think people aren't forthcoming about going to therapy? There's a stigma behind it, specifically, uh, especially, not specifically, especially in, in black and brown communities, especially amongst men. And so it's one of those things that, that are, you know, stigmatized and that we're afraid to say because, like, it's either you're crazy, you're on pills, or we write it off. But instead of writing it off, BJ kept the conversation going. As a teacher at Jefferson High School in South Central Los Angeles, he saw his students struggling with their mental health. There's nobody on this planet that doesn't have some form of struggle, right? But I'm in the underserved, you know, what would be considered a uh, poverty level community at a, at a high school that's one of the oldest high schools in L.A. Um, and I know this, that the makeup of the, uh, of the school is mainly Hispanic Latino. We lack uh, resources here. You know, we lack school materials here. We lack a bunch of things. So he launched the Can I Be Vulnerable bus in March. Its first stop, Jefferson High School. So we provide the community with questions to go on the bus and interview a mental health professional. So that way, when they're ready to embark on their own journey, they at least have some knowledge on what questions to ask. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, black Americans are 20% more likely to experience mental health issues, but are less likely to receive mental health help. And more than half of Hispanic young adults with serious mental illness may not receive treatment. There is still that family stigma that the kids themselves probably recognize that their parents or their guardians probably are still on the, the, the stigma of you can't be crazy. We can't afford to be crazy. That's for white people. We, you know, I mean, like we don't have access, that kind of thing. I'm reading your shirt, but tell me about that. Can I be vulnerable? What's the what's the history with that? Can I be vulnerable is my mental health platform. Uh, it started off as a uh, docu series. Actually, um, I recorded about 50 plus black men, and I let just them just talk about their mental and emotional health journey with a very personal story. Can I be vulnerable? Yes, you can. Will you be vulnerable? Well, you should. Um, we did that for like a year and a half, and then it kind of evolved into some other things. Uh, we created a curriculum for high school students. What does Can I Be Vulnerable mean to you? <laughs> Funny. Uh, it's, it's, it's a question, and it's also a statement. So for me now, when I say Can I Be Vulnerable, I'm probably going to say something real. Like, I'm, I'm going to get emotional with you. I'm going to tell you something. I want to share me with you. So when I say, can I be vulnerable, that means listen up because I'm about to, we're about to get into a conversation, something that I need to hear or I want, just, I want you to know about me. How did the bus come about? I was thinking how to further do the work. And I was like, I don't, why don't you just taco truck this thing? Why don't you just bring the people? It was a very simple concept. How about I put mental health professionals on a bus and take them to the community like the ice cream man? And that's basically where it started. <laughs> at. I, it was nothing profound other than that. Right. I'm thinking of Eddie Murphy. Mom, throw down some money. <laughs> the ice cream is. Uh, yeah, here. like it was really just that. I was like, you know what? Mental treats for the for the kids, man. I think it's brilliant. That's really what it was. I was like, yeah, if I had a theme song, they know it's going to be mental health coming. When you were done with your event at Jefferson, did you hear back specifically from any students? What did they tell you? They liked it. One, <laughs> they felt it was needed. Two, they would definitely go on a bus again. But more specifically, they do plan on going on a mental health journey. Um, having somebody that looks like them was really encouraging. They felt more at ease. There's an important part here about cultural competent care, right? I mean, that's at the essence of this. Yes, yes. And depending on what community we go to, I'll reach out to the mental health resources in that community so that they can do the work. I just have two office spaces on a bus. Um, right. But essentially, it could be resourcing where these social workers provide resources to the community on where they can get access to care, either free or you know sliding scale or provide something themselves. On the other end, it's uh, it's educational as well. I didn't expect the kids to get on board to and just open up, but we also had you know mental health professionals that looked like them. I had a black man, I had a black woman, I had a Hispanic woman. They spoke the language, and I think that helped tremendously. Hey, do you think that the, like this this particular generation of young people that that you work with? and talk to and know, do you think this is the generation that can really help destigmatize 
the mental health issue in the black community. I truly believe that the next generation looking at us do this work and will continue on and will definitely do it. Since its launch, BJ's mental wellness bus has made more stops around Southern California and Las Vegas. BJ plans on keeping those conversations and his bus rolling. And that's the thing about it. If you build it, they will get there eventually. Because I've been noticing, like, again, with my bus, people have been asking me, B, when are you coming here? When are you coming here? This is great. But I do think the future of it is bright. I do think this can be something that can go worldwide, honestly. That is a stud right there. That's BJ Williams. He's got big plans for that bus and that community. We appreciate his time and efforts out in California. Coming up next, we're gonna check back in with Ohio State's Harry Miller. Welcome back to our Mind Matters Mental Health Special. Today we're focusing on the people who are pushing the conversation forward on young people and mental health. On the surface, college football player Harry Miller seemed to have it all, but the offensive lineman struggled with his mental health behind the scenes, opening up about his football retirement on the Today Show in March. Sadly, he's not alone in his mental health struggles. We caught up with Harry to talk about how he's doing and what needs to happen now when it comes to athletes and mental health. I don't think it can just be college football because there's been so many other athletes from different sports who have shared the same thoughts. So it's all within college athletics. In recent months, a series of high profile athletes across the US dying by suicide. Raising questions about what can be done to better help student athletes manage their mental health. I wish I had the foresight to diagnose what was going on. I think the worst part is when we don't talk about it. I've been in the sphere of seeing psychiatrists or mental health professionals since I was young, since I was eight years old or so. Um, but prior to the season last year, I was, in, I was in a pretty poor spot, and perhaps poor is an understatement. Harry's been on the football path since he was little. While it started off as just an after-school activity, he later found himself struggling under the pressure. I remember a coach one time during recruiting when I was a junior came up to me and talked about the NFL. I remember like in that moment, um, I don't know, you just feel sort of the, the weight of the hand you've been dealt. Some of those prophecies feel like death sentences. And you're like, there's no way out of this. Everybody thinks this is what I am and I've got nowhere to go now. Last season, he hit his breaking point. So I, I spoke with my coach, Coach Day, our head coach at Ohio State, and um, was just honest and straightforward with him. I was depressed and anxious, and I had suicidal thoughts. And um, over the course of what was the season, essentially, I was, I was receiving help for that. And I think back about how could I have been so sad and have felt so awful that I, that I would have wished not to be here. So he retired from football. 
Harry, in March, when you said that you're going to not play football for medical reasons and you got the courage and you actually did it, what did that feel like? Yeah, it felt awesome because um, it felt like taking a mask off. And prior to that, having to wear a mask, I gave up the stuff that was not for me to begin with. And because yeah. of that, I'm just extremely, I'm extremely grateful. And it's honest and it feels, and it feels great. When you were on the Today Show and you shared your story, what was it like when you like got off TV? Like, what was the reaction to that? It was huge, a huge response. I had high schoolers talking about their experience. I had other college athletes talking about their experience. I had middle-aged men talking about how they wanted to take their own lives. I, I don't know, I don't know many issues um, that's spread across every demographic like mental health does. Yeah. And it's our hearts, it's our souls, and it's in every single one of us. What does your mental health like toolkit look like? What works for you? Do you go to treatment? What do you do? I would say I have some, some like logical backstops in my head now. I just think of all the people who love me. I think of my mother and my father, my brother, my girlfriend and my friends. For me, it feels like I, I sort of hiked forward a few miles and got the layout of the land. And I'm hoping to just come back and say like, you don't have to keep going this way. There's a better route than this. At Ohio State, Harry still trains with his teammates each morning. And the football staff has begun a suicide prevention training, which will equip them with the tools necessary for responding appropriately to someone in crisis. QPR, question, persuade, refer. It's a way to save lives. It's a way to give people hope. With the pressure of playing collegiate football lifted from his shoulders, Harry is focusing on his education. Someday, he wants to be a Rhodes Scholar. And he's enjoying his hobbies, from reading classic works of literature to playing guitar. If I'm sad, there's a sad song to play. And if I'm happy, there's a happy song to play. And um, I don't have to put it into words. And it's, it's, it's already there. For anybody who stumbles upon this and, um, and watches it and is struggling with their own demons, what do you say to somebody like that? There is nothing so absolute as, as suicide. And I remember I was talking to my friend um, when I was in a bad, a bad way. And um, he just said, give it another day. And um, that became a sort of motto of ours to just give it another day. What a great guy and such an inspiration. Appreciate Harry. Coming up next on Mind Matters, we're gonna show you two different apps trying to help teens' mental health.
So today on Mind Matters, we're shining a light on the people working to solve the youth mental health crisis and eliminate the stigma around discussing the topic. Now, part of that battle includes, of course, meeting young people where they are, where they frequently are. And where's that? Yeah, their phones. So we wanted to highlight two apps that are helping out. Every teen should have Teen Talk. After school, 16-year-old Lana Garrido logs into Teen Talk and gets to work. It's kind of an outreach app where like teens can use it as like a resource whenever like they're in a crisis or like they need someone to talk to. On the app, teens can anonymously post about what's bothering them, whether it's mental health or relationship problems or issues with friends. From there, Lana and hundreds of other teens work as teen advisors, trained to respond empathetically and offer resources and coping techniques peer-to-peer. -peer. Teen advisors receive 50 hours of training and are supported by licensed mental health professionals who can step in if a user is in crisis. 17-year-old Serena Guerrero has been a Teen Talk advisor since 2020. There's a shared understanding of what high school is like. There's a shared understanding of how friend groups can be. And that's something that I don't think that you can always get from an adult, no matter how much you trust them. The app is offered through the Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles organization. Teen Talk app was started four years ago in response to a growing need that we saw for teens to receive mental health support. And to date, we've reached over 40,000 teens in the last four years. At the start of the pandemic, the surging number of new users crashed the app, which had to be rebuilt to accommodate its new user base. We've also seen that for a lot of teens, just having a conversation with a peer about what they're going through can be a protective factor that allows them not to go down a path of more mental health challenges, more anxiety, more depression, that it actually prevents that. And that mental health support and validation can go both ways. What made me want to join Teen Talk was, it was a personal experience. Um, I struggled with an eating disorder myself. And I feel like through my journey with mental health, I kind of wanted to be that person I wish I had when I was struggling. I feel like I was able to relate with other kind of teens who are going through like similar things. Sometimes it's not even about eating disorders. It could be something about like body dysmorphia or like kind of body related issues. And I feel like that definitely kind of helped me heal from that experience. So one of the lessons that we go over in training and in our continued education classes are dealing with people who struggle to come out as part of the LGBTQ community. The way Teen Talk was just able to make that feels so normal. It really empowered me to come out to um, friends and family. Um, and I, I didn't know at the time how much hiding that part of, hiding that part of myself um, was affecting me until I was able to come out. The app wants to break multiple stigmas around getting mental health help and show that sometimes being on your phone is a good thing. The reality is that teens have a smartphone, they're on their phone and they're on social media. And we want to make sure that Teen Talk app is what they're accessing because it's safe and it's really a good resource for them. Social media does have a bad reputation and I see it on our app. I see teens coming to us about being very insecure about the way they look because they see all these photoshopped models on Instagram, TikTok. However, Teen Talk, you don't see anyone. There's no talk about what makeup brands to use. On the app, you come on and you see other teens posting about things that they're struggling with. That urge to strip away all the gloss and Photoshop on our feeds, powering another app called Be Real. Once a day, at a random time, users get a notification that simply says, time to be real. At that moment, you've got two minutes to snap a pic. Your phone's front camera captures what you're doing, no matter how mundane while the rear-facing camera captures a selfie of you. It's really like just a snippet in someone's life. It's just a snapshot. Maybe I just got out of the shower or like I'm in the middle of working out or something. You know, nobody's photo is gonna be of them in like full glam, you know, like looking their best. You, I think it's sort of an unspoken rule that we're all gonna do it and be, you know, our just like natural selves. Even though the app launched in early 2020, it really skyrocketed this year 
growing 315% since January 1st, according to Aptopia. For college sophomore Juliana Coffarella, she says it's a way to share a more real part of her life with close friends, like when she got a notification during her aunt's funeral. So I like quickly snapped just like a picture of like just my eyes up um, and they were like really puffy from crying at a funeral. But you know, those are things that, uh, like slightly more vulnerable moments. Be Real is marketed as an alternative to addictive social networks. It won't make you famous, the company bluntly states. If you want to become an influencer, you can stay on TikTok and Instagram. It's definitely not as draining on your mental health. You know, it's not these like curated images from celebrities or influencers or anything. Like it's really just your friends and um, that, you know, you're not getting that sort of outside pressure to be something that you're not. Two apps trying to foster better mental health for teens. Hopefully both of those great apps will inspire more just like them. That's going to do it for our Mind Matters special. We certainly hope that these stories inspire you to please keep the conversation going with your loved ones. To find trusted mental health resources, that's a hard thing to do. If you're looking for those resources near you, we encourage you to visit Project Healthy Minds. I'm on the board. They're doing some great work, and they can help you hook up with those resources. You can find more information at today.com slash mindmatters. We appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. evidence this morning that the so-called Mediterranean diet, it can sharply reduce your chances of developing dementia, even if you have a genetic risk for it. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar here, is here to tell us about the new study and that could have us eating healthier. What encouraging news. Yeah. I mean, anything can fight back against dementia and Alzheimer's, but this is a diet that a lot of people have been on or are on. Absolutely, Hoda. It is definitely another vote for the Mediterranean diet. So this study looked at over 60,000 individuals who were middle-aged um, and followed them for about nine years. Ooh. And there were close to 900 cases of dementia. People who followed strictly a Mediterranean diet had almost a quarter lower chance of developing dementia. And as you said in the lead, they actually took into account genetic risk, and that didn't even make a difference, which is really, really encouraging because you think that certain things are predetermined, mm -hmm. but this is the kind of thing that we can all actually implement in our lives. Can you remind everybody what the Mediterranean yeah. Yeah. diet is and, and then why it might have affected something to do with your brain health? Right. So, so the Mediterranean diet, think plant-based. Okay, Ooh. so we're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, seeds, legumes, things like that, fish, seafood, olive oil. You want to limit or eat in moderation mm -hmm. red meat, eggs, poultry, cheese, yogurt, and sweets. Why is it? Well, you know, some people have said maybe it's not a direct effect on the brain, but maybe because it's reducing inflammation, it's, mm -hmm. it has wow. antioxidants, that it's helping your heart health, that helps the blood vessels in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know exactly why, but nonetheless, this is very compelling. It was such a large study. Besides the, the change of diet, are there yes. ways that, that folks might be able to reduce the likelihood that they develop Alzheimer's or, or dementia? Absolutely. And all of these things, again, are lifestyle changes, getting adequate sleep, controlling your blood mm -hmm. pressure, controlling cholesterol, 
cholesterol, your blood glucose, staying physically and mentally active. These are all things that can help with cognitive decline and hopefully stave off the risk of dementia. Okay, Thanks. thank Thanks. you, Thanks. Dr. Thanks. Natalie. Thanks. Diet can play a big part in our ability to stay sharp and may even reduce your risk of cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's. Here's a look at how the foods we choose can impact our ability to focus and function. We have all felt that dreaded mid-afternoon slump, and it turns out there's a reason for it. What's happening in the brain when you feel this slump is it doesn't have the fuel it needs. The fuel that you're providing all have an impact on whether or not your brain will be as sharp as it humanly can be. That fuel comes in the form of food. 20% of the calories you consume go toward brain function, which needs specific nutrients to focus and function fully throughout the day. What goes into our bodies is almost certainly going to reflect itself in our brains. We're in an era now where we can get all kinds of processed, packaged foods that aren't necessarily what our bodies have evolved to deal with. To keep our health maximal, what you want to do is eat naturally. Research shows that people who eat a primarily plant-based diet are more likely to experience brain-boosting benefits both short-term and long-term. The clearest evidence of benefit and risk reduction revolves around the MIND diet and the Mediterranean diet, which have both been studied quite well and show good effects. MIND diet stands for Mediterranean Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's broken down into a list of healthy foods like leafy greens, beans, nuts, whole grains, fatty fish, having about two servings of berries every day actually help to reduce cognitive decline by about two and a half years. Of course, there are foods to limit too. Things you want to avoid are going to be anything that is high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, so white pasta, white bread, obviously any sugary drinks. You want to limit the amount of overall saturated fat that's coming into your diet, typically coming from meats, animal products such as high fat dairy, things of that nature. 75% of the brain is made up of water, so what you drink is important too. Many times when people say they feel drained of energy or they're hungry, they're just dehydrated. Water is really critical as a drink. Coffee is great. Any kind of tea will have benefit. In the short term, there's no doubt that caffeine improves processing speed and helps with attention. A lifetime habit of caffeinated beverages may be protective against brain disorders later. Psychologically, people see the effects of a diet shift pretty rapidly. They start feeling better, and they start having more energy, and this cascades into all sorts of other things in life, like how happy you are and how well you're sleeping at night. So when people shift their diets so that they're eating well, it really matters. A brain-healthy diet may also help prevent cognitive diseases, like Alzheimer's, which is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. 64-year-old Debbie Morden has a history of Alzheimer's in her family. My father had Alzheimer's for 12 years. His brother had Alzheimer's and three of his first cousins had Alzheimer's. Debbie has tested positive for an Alzheimer's gene and is taking a proactive approach. She's seen an Alzheimer's prevention specialist who recommended the MIND diet. That gene means I have a higher risk of Alzheimer's. I went on basically a vegan diet except for fish. I've cut out dairy and I'm eating more grains and more legumes, increasing olive oil and a daily intake of berries and also lowered alcohol to four ounces of red wine a couple times a week. After eight months, Debbie has significantly lowered her cholesterol and hopes her new diet will ward off cognitive deterioration. I watched my father for 12 years decline. The whole thing with, with Alzheimer's, it starts developing 10 to 20 years before you see signs of it. So you want to start preventing it as early as possible. I'm making the changes because I wanna live a healthy life as long as I can and enjoy it. Whether you're 85 or you're eight, now is the time to start building that base. Diet can prevent certain things. And I never want to have a conversation with my patient where they've developed something and we didn't have the years to work into that prevention factor. It's something you have to commit to and do it for the long haul. We always say we want a brain span to match your lifespan. For more on the MIND diet, head to hodaandjenna.com.
Whitmuth Moore is the author of This Is Your Brain on Food, Dr. Uma Naidu. Welcome, Dr. Naidu. Hi, Dr. Naidu. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna and Hoda. I'm a big fan, so oh. I'm excited to be here. That thank is so you. sweet. Okay, you know what? I I sort of like know in theory how this works because I know when I eat terrible food the night before, I wake up the next day and I feel even worse. And my goal in eating that terrible food is to soothe myself at night. For eating. So there's a real direct correlation between your gut and your brain. Exactly. You know, Hoda, you'd be surprised to know that some people call the gut the second brain. Mm. And here's why. They have a profound influence on one another, and they actually have the same origin in the body. So I think that's something useful for people to know when they, you know, when they make a decision about what to eat. Mm. Okay. So w we wake up in the morning. Sometimes we have those days where we're feeling sluggish, yeah. we're not motivated. Yeah. And I've noticed that if I eat certain things... I feel yeah. worse. Yeah. So, but what can we eat to make us start our day on the right path? Mm -hmm. That's a great question because I think we're all feeling a little bit of that these days. I like to add spices. So, you know, you could add things like black pepper, cinnamon, and ginger, which are actually ingredients of my grandmother's chai tea recipe, but mm. they're great to kind of liven things up. Also things like saffron, which can be added. It's a great aromatic. It can be added to a risotto or adding, you know, things like rosemary and sage to a roasted to roasted veggies can help liven things up for you. And maybe you, because what you're trying to do is feel more alert and um, you know feel feel more energy as well. What would you say is like the best breakfast if you want to start the day mm -hmm. right? So I actually love uh, either something like a chia pudding or, you know, chia pudding, a little bit of coconut milk and topped with um, lots of different nuts. My favorite go-to nuts that are great brain foods are either hazelnuts or macadamia. And, you know, a simple thing like that that you can even make ahead is mm -hmm. a great way to, you know, you can plan for the week, uh, set out your little chia puddings and you have them ready to go. So we have been talking all morning about how people are more anxious than ever. Mm -hmm. What are some foods that can actually help soothe anxiety? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think the uncertainty is what's so difficult for people, and this is where fiber is your friend. Mm. Um, so adding in fiber-rich foods that you get from, you know, vegetables, um, certain berries, uh, beans, nuts, seeds, and legumes, those help to sort of even out your, um, your blood sugar levels because they break down more slowly in the body. But it's also important to know things to avoid when you're feeling anxious. Yes. And what I like to remind people about here is that there's sometimes hidden sources of caffeine that we don't think about, um, such as, you know, sodas that have caffeine or other beverages, and then things like, um, you know, chocolate could have caffeine. And mm -hmm. um, some over-the-counter headache pills as well. Mm -hmm. So you want, you want to try to avoid these if you're feeling super anxious and you're feeling stressed. What if you're feeling just down? You don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a funk or whatever. And usually in those yeah. moments, that's when you go for the comfort yes, food that like really take you down the rabbit hole. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a long rabbit hole. So, so I, I like to suggest things that people can do right now. You know, adding prebiotic or probiotic rich foods, which are fermented foods, um, into your diet even right now can really help you and start to make a difference. Um, but, you know, I also think the same thing with depression, Hoda and Jenna. I think that also knowing things to avoid becomes super important. And here's where I want people to know that there are actually a lot of studies that show that sugar is associated quite profoundly with levels of depression. Mm. And um, things like, you know, nitrates, which you find in processed meats, um, are also uh, linked to depression. So maybe cut back on those foods and add back, you know, prebiotic rich foods and probiotics, which are usually fermented foods, like, like a fear, unsweetened, and things like that. Like what, what were the pre or probiotic foods that are, we can try? So prebiotic foods are like garlic, leeks, onions, um, you know, it's different types of vegetables. And these feed the good bugs in your gut and help and really help you stave off symptoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then probiotics are usually usually a supplement, but fermented foods um, are rich in these active cultures and things like miso, kimchi, unsweetened kefir, sauerkraut, um, kombucha mm. are all good options for you. Oh, so okay. I think a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Some I, I used to drink chamomile tea before mm -hmm. bed. Let's talk about things that are good for sleep and then mm -hmm. the benefits of chamomile tea. Absolutely. So chamomile, you know, the great aroma really helps us to de-stress and it's well known. 
I also have another tip about de-stressing, which is turmeric with black pepper, a pinch of black pepper. And you can add it to a soup or smoothie. And why turmeric with a pinch of black pepper? It hits the high notes on so many conditions in mental wellness. So that's that's one of my go-tos. Okay. Great. Dr. Naidu, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate you. Okay, are you ready to feel your best yet? If the answer is yes, we've got some power foods to tell you about that can improve your overall health and wellness. We're talking about immunity, sleep, brain health, all the things Max. Lugavir is a health and science journalist. His recent book is called Genius, Genius Kitchen. Kitchen. First of all, I love the fact that the things we need are right in front of us, right in the fridge, right in the supermarket that can actually help us physically. We're always taking pills if we have yeah. a problem. We're not working the front food end. Food is medicine. is such yeah. a cool way to think yeah. about life, right? It is. I mean, yeah, food is so powerful. I mean, with, with every bite you take, you are essentially either feeding or fighting disease. And so I'm here to pre present some of what I think are the most powerful foods available to most most people in your average okay. supermarket. Okay. Mushrooms, yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah, so mushrooms can actually be used to balance immune function, to foster better immunity. Wow. So there are a few mechanisms here which are, are okay. still being elucidated, yeah. but essentially some mushrooms create vitamin D, which can tamper down an overactive immune response. Mm -hmm. But I think most interestingly, mushrooms I like lion's mushrooms. mane, which are typically pretty available, they actually create antioxidants that we produce in our own bodies, one of which is called glutathione. It's uh -huh. considered the mother of all antioxidants. It helps to detox. Mm. And and reduce What's, oxidative stress. Which one's stress. lion's mane? This one? So That's oyster, right? Yeah. So oh, we have... Is we that have, lion mane? That's not a lion's mane. No, mm. lion's mane actually has like a... It has the consistency of crab, fresh crab. It's oh. really, By really By the way, tasty. whatever this one is... It's really good. I want to keep eating it. Here's a tip. Actually, you don't want to rinse mushrooms. You just want to... You just oh, want eat to them a little dirty. dirty? Cook them, yeah. Eat them a little dirty with some nice uh, okay. butter or olive okay. oil. Okay, move on to kiwi. kiwi. So here we've got kiwi. Kiwi can be used to promote better digestion and good sleep. So we're seeing clinical trials Ooh, now. Wow. That two kiwi a day. Yeah, actually in a head-to-head -head match against psyllium husk. <laughs> Kiwi has been shown to, to help uh, reduce constipation, which a lot oh. of people suffer from, and also, <laughs> yeah, can, can help fight constipation and also improve sleep, too, before Should bed. Should you skin on or off? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. Eat the kiwi with the skin, what? because skin the skin on. contains Skin's more good. vitamin E. It doesn't take and, I've never yeah. eaten a kiwi with skin. Yeah, it's Try good. It. People think that it's weird, but it's, it's actually bad. really tart and delicious. Mm -hmm. You like it's it? It's not bad. You're I don't know bad. that I could force my kids to eat. Wow, Just, tart. It's, it's good, tart. right? But it balances out the okay. sweet. But what, it, what if the kid done eat it? Is it okay, the middle stuff? Yeah, yeah. the middle is great, okay. too. The middle is great, okay. too. Okay, let's get to these fruits. Okay, so here we have brain foods. So these foods are loaded with compounds called plum. flavonoids, which are plant pigments that are usually in the outer skin. We've got apples, we've got citrus, we've got plums. Berries are a great mm. source of flavonoids. They've been shown to boost BDNF in the blood, which is a, a miracle grow protein that actually helps to support healthy neurons. BDNF, it's BDNF, called? BDNF, yeah. Okay. We produce it in our muscles when we work out. One of the reasons why exercise is so great, but this has actually been shown to boost it. So you never know. An apple a day might keep the neurologist doesn't, away. Doesn't matter red or green, whatever? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. High right. flavonoid foods. Okay, right. let's there go to go. strawberries mm. and almonds. Yeah, so these are anti-aging foods. Strawberries are rich in a compound called fisetin, which is known as a senolytic. So we have in our bodies, all of us, especially as we age, uh, cells called senescent cells okay. that secrete pro-inflammatory compounds that can make, make our skin look uh, more aged. And so these actually fight aging by helping to kill off those <laughs> zombie cells. Yeah. You can actually no, thank you, zombie skills. Mm. And actually, this is actually also very interesting. Strawberry leaves are rich in caffeic acid, which is a very powerful antioxidant. So eat the leaves? So when you yeah, eat you a eat strawberry, you eat the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, I do. And almonds are loaded with magnesium, which 50% of Americans don't consume adequate uh, amounts of. And magnesium can help fight DNA damage. Wow, so, this is again, crazy. Yeah. Okay, hit us with the last one. Okay, so here we've got dark chocolate and coffee. So this, I mean, people are probably at home rejoicing. If I am. Loaded with compounds called flavanols. When you buy dark chocolate, you want to make sure that the cacao percentage is high. And it's not, it hasn't been processed with alkali, also known as Dutch processed, which greatly degrades oh. the health quality of the uh, chocolate. And then from, a, uh, from the standpoint of coffee, coffee's long been associated with better cardiovascular yeah. health, reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative conditions. And we now know that, there, that caffeine actually can help promote better lipids in the blood, so better, like, uh, healthier cholesterol levels. Wow.
It is Super Food Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is back, and this week she has not one, not two, but three surprising superfoods that could help boost brain power and enhance your memory. This is exciting. First of all, the role that food plays in terms of our, our memory, in terms of our brain health and all that. Which is a great question. So there's a lot of studies that we have now that are showing that there are certain compounds within foods and beverages okay. that can help to slow cognitive decline and also boost memory, boost brain power. Power, it's all good, and I'm going to feature three today. Let's start with the blueberries. Blueberries, you can tell from their color, they are packed with antioxidants. And in fact, that they rank number one when the USDA did like a huge rally of all of the fruits and vegetables. Number one. Number okay. one. Yeah. And they get their blue color from something called anthocyanins. That's the name of the antioxidant. And we know that that helps to boost brain power. There's actually even a Harvard study that shows if these women, they ate one cup a week. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And they had significant increase in their smarts. They did all sorts of tests and stuff. How easy is that, oh, right? Yeah. You could throw them in pancake batter and muffin yeah. batter on your oatmeal, but this is my favorite way. Classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Swap out the sugary jam oh, and just put whole blueberries. And this is so fun out. for your kids. Huh. No, they stick because of the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And then um, for kids, you can make a tic-tac-toe board. Oh, this is like the ultimate pre-exam morning breakfast. I love that. <laughs> that's a great idea. So cocoa powder is the next superfood. Cocoa powder is like the king of dark chocolate because it's 100% dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And they contain something called flavanols. It's another type of antioxidant that we know can keep your blood vessels healthy and elastic, which means a healthy heart. And a healthy heart equals a healthy brain, because when your blood vessels are open and elastic and healthy and happy, all of the nutrition goes right up to your brain. You get more oxygen, you get more nutrients. So what I'm gonna show you that you can do is add, it's not sweet, cocoa powder is not sweet and indulgent like mm -hmm. dark chocolate, but you can do a lot of things with it. Okay. If you take some and you mix it into, this is just a vanilla low-fat yogurt. Yogurt. Mm -hmm. Two ingredients, and you've Perhaps now some. made a brain boosting chocolate pudding. So, my kids oh. will just think they're having chocolate pudding, just and really. Tell them it's chocolate pudding. Oh, wow. Mm. Isn't that good? That's Two like ingredients. Now this Doesn't get easier than that. This is the most right. surprising superfood to me. Coffee? Coffee. Al, every single week we are hearing more and more studies showing that yeah. the benefits in terms of brain health for coffee. We used to think it was just the caffeine. We know yeah. that caffeine keeps you alert, it wakes you up, mm -hmm. but it's a combination of the caffeine and the antioxidants within coffee oh. that can help boost brain power. And that's really good news because a lot of people are caffeine sensitive. Mm -hmm. So that means decaf gives you these health perks as well. And all you need is about a half a cup to four cups a day to reap these benefits. So Even you're making a, a breakfast co uh, cookie. I developed. I'm calling this You're my so excited exclusive. About these. I'm so excited about these cookies. <laughs> these are brain boosting breakfast coffee cookies. This is exclusive to okay. the Today Show. Just to the Today yeah. Show. I'm going to put right. them on Instagram and I'm going to put them on our website. So for the dry ingredients, it's um, whole grain flour. We have cocoa powder, some mm. cinnamon, and we have a little bit of uh, baking powder. And some salt and some salt, kosher salt. Now I'm adding instant coffee, oh. boom, oh. right just, into the batter. We're gonna so mix. I thought that was connected to this, but no, this is just instant coffee. This is just instant okay. coffee. You could also use finely powdered regular coffee mm -hmm. as well, but it's easy to buy the instant. So you mix okay. this up. Yeah, What's so the wet ingredients are a lot of usual breakfast foods. I have Greek yogurt, I have eggs, I have mashed banana, and a little bit of honey. You mix oh, these two okay. things in, then you fold in your blueberries, because all three superfoods are in here. That's Go amazing. taste the cookie. See what you think. Right. Right. And then a little bit of chocolate better. chips. Each cookie is only 80 oh, wow. calories and comes packed with protein and fiber. So you could have three with a cup of coffee for oh, breakfast. Wow. Fantastic. Wait, Joy, thank three you cookies. so much. Three cookies for breakfast. For these recipes, go to today.com health, and we'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness.
we're going to tell you about five foods to add to your diet to help improve memory, energy levels, and sleep. Dr. Taz Batia is an integrative wellness physician and host of the Superwoman Wellness Podcast. But this is for everybody. Dr. Yes. Taz, good morning. Good morning. So you're saying before we get to it that, that if you start incorporating these into your diet, you'll see results relatively quickly? The beauty about kind of getting your diet right is usually within three weeks, oh. you can see a change. And it can be as quiet as you have more sleep and you have more energy to like you're on and you're focused and ready to go. Wow. What is about these foods that we're going to look at here? What is about these particular foods and, and other items that give the brain that boost? Well, what, why we have picked these foods is because we call them superfoods. They just have a ton of nutrients for every serving. Okay. So they're, they're efficient, right? So if you're trying to get these nutrients in, this is an efficient way to do it to keep your brain and your energy superpower. All right. Our first super ingredient is yes. magnesium. Where do we find that? So magnesium, I always call the miracle micronutrient. It helps us with sleep. It helps calm us down. It helps balance serotonin. Try that. It's Believe so it or not, dark chocolate is going to be oh, one of our best sources. An ounce of it has about 64 milligrams of magnesium okay. in it. Legumes are great. They come in at about 70 milligrams. A tablespoon of flax, which you see right here, mm -hmm. at about 40. Avocado also has magnesium, but less than the dark chocolate. So you, so you have this recipe, these little balls. What are in those then? So it's a lot of cacao, which has a lot of the magnesium mm -hmm. and the antioxidants in it, almond butter for the healthy fats, flax seeds, mm -hmm. mix it up together, super easy, has a little bit of oat too. A little dark chocolate in there. A little dark there. chocolate in there, so it's, it's yummy, yummy right? stuff. Yeah. And not I too much calories no. either, Not too many it? calories, no. so we have a chocolate craving, calorie. you can go for Let's it. Let's talk collagen here, because yes. collagen, you say, is, it's actually naturally occurring in our bodies. We all have it. We've all got collagen. It's naturally occurring. We know it for skin and health, hair and overall health, but it actually helps support the gut lining, helping us to absorb the nutrients. So many people are eating healthy, but they're not absorbing what they're eating. Collagen comes in and helps us with that, helps the brain, helps energy. It's in a lot of naturally occurring proteins. We've got salmon here, for example, and chicken. You know, these are things that are a great way to get salmon in. This looks like chicken this stock. Is, How would you use it? This is bone broth. Bone so broth. Some people oh. will just drink bone broth and get a great Roker, source Roker of collagen. Try a swig. Roker does Wash that and then if, down. You're, if you're vegetarian, you can get some collagen from your vegetables as well. It's just that we get a lot more through our proteins and through our bone broth. Okay. Uh, uh, these are cruciferous. Those are can cruciferous. you only get the collagen from cruciferous? Not vegetables? necessarily. Okay. No, no, you can get it from other vegetables as well. It's just not as dense. All right, this is a new one on me. Choline. What is that? Why is it good? So choline, I feel like, doesn't get enough press, and I'm so glad we're talking about it today. So choline actually is a nutrient that comes in and coats all our nerves, so it helps us with learning, Never with memory, that. with hmm. focus, and we really want to get choline in our diet. So choline is naturally found in eggs. Eggs hmm. are one of the best sources but you've got to eat the egg yolk. Okay. The yolk has the choline, has about 140 milligrams. We've got mushrooms and burgers here. Which one do you think has more choline? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. You guys win. Good, Good job. job. So mushrooms actually have more choline How than a burger. How many eggs would you have to eat or mushrooms? Like what's a serving to get enough choline so any given day? Just, this is the beauty of eggs. One full egg, including oh. the yolk, will okay. do it. You need a cup of mushrooms. You actually need two burgers to get the choline. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ooh, I love choline. Mushroom. Yeah. Mushrooms and eggs, I guess. There yeah. we go. This, yes. is burger. this is something I've never heard of. Oh, ghee. I've heard of this. I've it's like butter or something? Ghee is uh, it's like butter. That's a great way to think about it. It's clarified butter. It's been used in Eastern systems of medicine for a really long time, and it's been used as a healing fat. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because ghee actually has less lactose, less casein. So if you've got somebody that's dairy intolerant, yeah. can't tolerate that stuff, they can usually tolerate ghee very well. But the secret superfood ingredient here is MCT, or medium chain triglycerides. That helps the brain. It helps the gut. It balances is everything living down here in the mm. gut and that is really the powerhouse the source of our energy so if we're not getting some of these healthy fats in that's one of the biggest reasons I see brain and energy start to go down. how do you get ghee in your diet I'm not looking to yes like a big old no bite we don't want that. you we and we don't want you Did to you do put that it on toast you can put it on toast literally all you need is about a quarter to a oh, half wait, of make a sure teaspoon. They see that. a tiny little bit a tiny little teaspoon you don't need okay. a lot and you can spread it on something you, it also has a higher smoke point so you can bake and fry with it oh, as well okay. so you can use Use it as butter. Exactly. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday.